minus 50 seconds. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. Minus twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Shout out to Coppish. Shout out to Coppish, guys. All the, good work the two up. legends, Emil Heskey, Howard, Howard Gell. Can't get much better than that guy. Yeah. You know what to do now. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm with legends, guys. <laughs> 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 yes, people. What is going on? Pick up yourselves each and every time. And welcome to another Friday calling show. Finally, finally. Apologies for it being delayed. You know, Fridays are very, very techy days for family people like we are. So, you know what I mean? It's one of them, one of them ones. But we're here, people. We're here. We're here. We're here. Big up to everyone who was waiting. I know stream was around we're about 20 minutes late. Apologies for that as well, people. Um, yeah, hectic, hectic day. Cal will be joining me as soon as he can. Uh, we'll have no Matt tonight, but it will be. Cal will be joining me at some point. Obviously, be getting you guys in in a minute to have your thoughts. I've got a feeling that a lot will be about Liverpool, which I kind of want. I kind of want um, so we can talk about these problems. But at the same time, have some fun. Same time, have some fun. Right. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into it, people. And I've got a special surprise for you as well afterwards. So stay tuned. We're delighted to tell you about one of our newest sponsors at SofaScore. That's right, we've partnered up with the highest rated live score app on Google Play Store and the App Store so you can access all your football needs at your fingertips. You get live scores and notifications straight to your phone. You can also follow your favourite competition from a choice of 600, yes I said it, 600 tournaments from across the globe. Plus, if you get fed up of us discussing player ratings, you get real-time sofa score ratings for each player. Not to mention heat maps, you can see where players really affecting the game. Shot maps, where are they taking shots from? Where is Nunes going to score from next? Attack momentum and a player's average position. Pause. Pause. Follow your favourite players and look through the archives at different historical data as well. People, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and download the SofaScore app or use the QR code on the screen that you'll see now and you'll be entered to a prize draw to win a Liverpool shirt of your choice. Once you've downloaded the app, send us a screenshot on social media or to our email which is teamcoppish at gmail.com. Don't delay, download the SofaScore app today. little bit of housekeeping make sure you get that app downloaded using the link in the description guys to enter into our prize draw that will be announced at the end of the sponsorship um so people we've had a lot of members handed out big up herbs man big up john big up bazaar pimp everyone who's been giving um uh, member who's been gifted memberships memberships have been brilliant M uh, members video dropped today from cal and here is a tiny little exclusive for all the members i'm never gonna say anything i'm just gonna i'm just gonna play this oh he got lucky oh he done me he, <laughs> he done me there bro i'm not even gonna lie i got the runner oh. Good flip, right, hold on, hold on, hold on, Drift. Yeah, to Diaz, there. there you go, bro. 
I'm in the gut to stay with you, bro. Oh, oh, God. God, bro. Oh. Lucky, you're lucky. Uh, watch out for this corner. Members, it's finally here. We finally configured it. We finally figured it out. And straight after this live stream ends, that members exclusive is going to be up and live. All right, right on, Bill. Big up, Sando. Big up yourself, bro. EA FIFA legend right there, people. So, yes, people, straight after this show finishes, the members exclusive EA24 will be out, and that series is looking to be a mad one. We had some fun. It was crazy, but we had some fun, man. We had some fun. Right. Without further ado, let me put the link in the chat to get you guys on and let's do some talking people i am going to be restricted with the time um depending on what's happening because obviously we want to make sure we get everybody on but let's do this Everybody's jumping in. I see the background building up. Now, how are you feeling on this Friday night anyway? How are we feeling? It's a bit of a mad one still because, yeah, still not sure how I feel. Big up to everyone who saw the preview. Oh, yeah, second time I've been live today as well. Flipping out the grind, it does not stop. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't live for the preview, big up everyone who is watching the preview with us live for Crystal Palace on Sunday. That preview is also out. And on the main channel, the views review for the Atalanta game will be coming out as well, people. Big up to everyone who sent in their viewers reviews. Love as always to you guys. Um, so yeah, the viewers review will be out on this channel straight after this video. And the FIFA will be released for the members on this channel straight after. So we've got two videos dropping as soon as this video is finished. That's four videos in one day. Four videos in one day. That's what we'll be doing, people, to keep you entertained. Right. Without further ado, let me bring in my first guest. I've, he's never been first, so why not? Let's do this. Even though he was second into the studio anyway. Well, go on, bro. Hey, are you good, Drifty? I'm good, man. I'm good. What's going on, G? <laughs> I'm good, man. You know when Long the show was yeah when the show was scheduled. You know I was gonna ask about England squad. Is this gonna be one of the best heroes? I was gonna ask <laughs> if if Haaland is one of the the worst greatest player ever. Dash, I'm dashing it all out of the window. Dash out the window, man. We need to talk about Liverpool. Go for it, bro. Go for it. Yeah, man. I, you know what, Jifty? I, and I always say this. I said this already. I don't know how people I don't know kicking a ball in a fish net gets me so angry. <laughs> I don't know how. Every other thing, I'm so chill, Jifty. I'm so chill. I'm a chill guy. But, bro, I don't know what it is about football. I just get so angry, man. I don't understand it. And I know we all had that day when your family comes in here and say, Wow, you look like you get thumped up, and you have to say no, it's just football, man, because your face is just vex. So yeah, man. But I'm just watching social media today, Twitter, and I can't lie, the the the, the fighting it's it's draining, man. The fighting about who who's selling, who's going, who needs to get sell, who to put the blame on, bro. I can't lie. I don't know why people are arguing so much. Because at the end of the day, you could argue how much you want. At the end of the day, Michael Edwards could either say, you know what, Salah, you already have a contract, bro. You're staying next season. Or he could mm. say, you know what, your time's up, bro. You could sell. So all those sell him, is it him for sell this one, sell DR, sell Nunes? Bro, you could argue with what? It's not going to change. <laughs> it's not It's not your decision. So it's just all the fighting. That's why I want your opinion on. It's all the fighting on social media worth it, bro. Because I can't lie, I was been watching Liverpool Twitter today, and it has been, 
it's been a madness. And the so next you mean the yeah. between us as a fan base, you mean, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the next you know, the next question. Yeah, yeah, go on. No, 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 let me do that one first and then but then we'll go to the next one. So what, what I think it is, right, is because everybody is so emotional about this season, especially with Klopp leaving, whether mm. you think it's good that he's leaving, whether you're devastated that he's leaving, whatever it may be, I think he's put an extra pressure on this season that for whatever reason, let's not do the why should he have and all that stuff. That's irrelevant now and it's happened. Mm. But it's put it's put a pressure on us that we can't not win. I was saying yeah. this earlier, bro. If Klopp was here for next season, if Klopp said he's definitely seeing that his contract, he's rejuvenated, he's excited about the new team, we wouldn't care that much about not winning anything this year, even though we obviously always want to win. Because we'll mm. be sitting here thinking mm. to ourselves, well, you know what? All he's got to do is get a, get a couple men in the summer and this is Jurgen Klopp 2.0 team finish and we'll just go murder the league. Because we're yeah. ahead of schedule. We're doing what we're not supposed to be doing right now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think him leaving, bro, has put too much pressure on we've got to win something this season. And I think that's the reason why the fans are so um, split, why everybody's arguing so much, why everyone's getting so like tense and, and vexed about everything. But um, you know what's so magic? Yeah, I, I think, I think yeah, that's what I'm cutting quickly there. You know, mm. I've been seeing Endo Slander since yesterday, and I'm like, hasn't he been good for about three months? So this, I find we're, we're so reactionary as a fan base, man. The Liverpool fans in general. I know every fan base is reactionary, but how can someone put in three, four months of good football? And there's two games, and you're saying he's trash, sell him. Don't want him and know he's a bum. It's like, I don't understand. But as you said, <laughs> everyone is in the feelings because they want to do it for club. But bro, we mm. just need to chill. Just chill. If, watch, I'm saying this now. If we lost the Palace, every, anything can happen. Because I think my head will go as well if we lost the Palace. But I'm just saying, guys, we the season isn't done yet. Right now, it's looking bad. Right now, it's it's looking real bad. But a win against Crystal Palace, get back some momentum, get the, 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 the spirits up again. We can do this. But yeah, I just want to ask this last question. Yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. Yeah, I, I'm still going to ask it. Although Liverpool is the main subject, what should be England starting 11 for the Euros? That's your opinion. In your opinion. Uh, what, for England? Yeah, for the Euros coming up. What would you? What would be your starting eleven? Um, I I would have Ramsdale in goal. Mm. I would have John Stones and might have to be Maguire still. Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Maguire, it's like you feel yourself thinking it's foolish to pick Maguire, but I'm thinking Konza. Uh. Um, I'm thinking um, there's not many others really yeah, that you would, you would. Do you get what yeah, I mean? Like, tomorrow, you don't even get picked, so there's no point picking him because I'll get not going to pick him. Yeah. And the funny thing is, people, I, I can see a couple of people thinking it's a bit mad to start Ramsdale. And I get it because he hasn't played much football this season. But Pickford, for me, hasn't been good this season. He's had moments. But when you're getting peppered every single week, mm. you're, you're going to look like you're decent. He's just always rash for me. I know he plays yeah. well for England, but he's a very rash goalkeeper. So, look, if he plays, he plays. But um, I see a couple of people saying Braithwaite. Braithwaite has had a good season, but... Is he maybe a yeah. bit young to just start a year? Yeah. Um, at left back, oh boy, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I'm going Joey. I could see, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm putting Joey at left back after the season he's had, bro. Like mm. we can't really justify Chilwell playing. We can't. And Chilwell sure is always injured. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It's um. Yeah. Like left back is a very tricky one. We don't really have any good left backs in England. So based on the season he's had, I go Joey at left back, mm. and then at right back I would probably go. See, it depends if Trippier gets his form and fitness up because I would go Trippier usually at right back. Over Walker. 
Kyle Walker's having a very indecent season, isn't it? It would have to depend how he finishes the season. Yeah, that's true. But, but obviously, Walker or Trippier at right back. Mm. I mean, this is the conversation where you think about Trent now, isn't it? So it's like, yeah. all right. The best midfield is probably Kobe Mainu, Declan mm. Rice, and mm. Bellingham. That's probably the best midfield. Yeah, that's balance. Balance and everything, do you know what I mean? That's a perfectly balanced midfield that would most likely be able to go far in the tournament. Mm. But there's a part of me that's just thinking, how can you not have Trent in there, especially how well he's played when he has played in midfield? Yeah. And could it possibly just be you ask Rice to do a little bit more defensive work than he would if Mainly was playing? And you just go Bellingham and Trent, and you just have ridiculous creativity. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think I, Trent has to play in that new team, man. He has to start, but he wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think he will. And then mm. on up front, I'm going. I know Foden obviously is much better left, like I, I mean, centrally. I, I get that, but. I don't think you can play him centrally at the risk of having to not play Trent or not play Manuel or, or one of those guys. But mm. you could play him in there. But I would probably try Foden left first. And then if it stops working, then I'll play him centrally. But I'll start him left. I'll start Kane up front, Saka on the right. Yeah, that, that's a good squad, man. No shouts for Madison when you are thinking about the midfield. Good option well, off the bench. Yeah, I'm thinking Maddie on the bench. I'm thinking yeah. Watkins or uh, Tony on the bench. Because yeah. um, obviously these are good options. Yeah. He, here's the weird thing, bro. He might be playing poorly in the last few weeks based off his injury. But up until the injury, Curtis Jones should have been in this England squad. Yeah. And, I think he should be on the plane, man. He should be. 100%. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, you've got Grealish. Yeah. The bench will be super strong, bro. I mm. mean, Bowen. I forgot about Bowen. You got Bowen. Yeah, Bowen. Yeah. I'm Palmer. not going to lie. To you. France are the only team that should stop England winning the Euros, you know, if, if we're being completely honest. Yeah. England, for the first time, pretty much have the best squad in the mm -hmm. whole tournament apart from France. So. Mm. And you I'm know who you've been mentioned to? Cool, Palmer as well. Oh, my days. How did I. The squad is stuck. Yeah, the squad is stuck, man. Flip yeah. it. No, I forgot Palmer. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking this because I've been watching the England squad. I'm saying, bro, there's a lot of talent. But again, is Southgate is that guy? Would he be that guy? Or will he be defensive? We don't know. I think that Drew Bellingham has allowed him to want to let the players off the leash a bit because he's realised how good Bellingham is in midfield. Mm. I think before Bellingham started to play well in midfield, I don't think we felt like we could control midfield. But now mm. we've got Bellingham in there. We can control midfields now. So I don't think he's as scared to be possession-based as he used to be. Because you've you got to remember, when Foden wasn't playing well for England, when Bellingham wasn't old enough and, and hadn't got in there, when Rice wasn't quite the level he's at now, England struggled in midfield. Midfield was the part of the team yep. where you were a bit yep. like, ah, who should play? There's no balance. If he plays with him, there's no this, there's no that. Now there's perfect balance in the midfield. So I hope he's a little bit more possession-based and attacking because we've got to utilise the attackers we have. We've got some of the best attackers in world football in, in, in the English squad. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting, bro. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, so that's all I got. Um, Big up you guys again. I know right now Liverpool is trying their hardest to, you know, make our life hell, but we got to stick in there, man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's one I want to leave because I don't want to pick up much of your time because I know there's a lot of callers waiting. So I just want to say big up, man. As I always yeah, say, man. the best Liverpool fan channel on YouTube. And yeah, peace. Because yeah, we will need the heroes and the Copa America. You know that, Jeff? I'm happy the Olympics, the Copa America, and the Euros. I'm happy it's this year because how the season is panning out, bro, we might need something to, um, yeah, get our minds off. Yeah, 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 100, 100. <laughs> yeah, man. So, peace out, guys. Big peace up, out. Bro. Yeah, man. Big up, bro. Big up yourself. Right. Let me bring on my next guest. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Yeah, bro. So it took me is it your debut? To... This is your debut, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Yeah, I don't even like you, copish man. You know, I'm joking. 
<laughs> oh, God. I, don't I don't know if you caught much of what Mar was saying. Yeah, so I did. I was watching because I was waiting to see if he would jump out so I could try and jump in because I couldn't get in. Um, you oh, talk about okay, the England okay. squad, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's stacked, stacked, isn't it? It's stacked. Proper I think the stacked. only thing they're lacking is a left centre back, like a top class left centre back. I think Stones is top class, Walker's top class. And what, maybe what about Colwell? Off of the back of him having a bass, you know, I no, forgot I about Colwell when I was doing my defence. I wouldn't say he's top class yet, though. I think he's on the on the way, but he's not there. Would yet. you? Would you? No, would you play him and Stones maybe? Because Maguire's getting in, and it's a, it's so weird that Maguire's playing. The thing is, it, no, I hear it. But Maguire plays well for England because they they're not very expansive in the way they play, so it kind of suits his game. It does, so I'm yeah, not mad at it. Car I rate Cole. Look, if Chelsea are in the mud like we think they are, and we've got a chance of getting Colwell, then I'm all for it. That like, I rate mm. him that highly. I just don't know if he's ready to start for England. For England. Brave rates another one, yeah. but I don't think he's quite ready yet either. So. They're That's almost hard. a year or two away from being ready to partner Stones to go and win a major tournament. But I think it's always it's going to be Harry Maguire in the same way it's going to be Pickford in goal for Southgate. Yeah, I, I think it should be Ramsdale. I just think he's a better goalie. I know he hasn't yeah, played a lot, Ramsdale but he's a better played, goalie. He's, he's barely played. Yeah, but Pickford ain't even been good, bro. So does it matter? No, yeah. I, no, I hit, bro. Like you, you ain't got to convince me to get Pickford out of the team, bro. Like. And Pickford being in the team makes me not want to win. I can't stand him. Ever since he assaulted Virgil, bro, I can't stand him, bro. I didn't like Pickford so, before that, but yeah, just sure. But yeah, all right, let's get the next caller in. Yes, Tom is hey. the building. Hello. Well, go on. <laughs> yeah, man. Look. Uh, I had a good distraction with the uh, with the international break, and then, well, it says everything with the result at OT. And then last night, I remember after two nil, I did tune in to the uh, watch along, and then after two nil, just went outdoors, ran out at um, five a.m. morning Cal, and uh, let's just say I had a productive ever since. <laughs> and we should tune back. Tune back in with the uh, on on the replay with the uh, match reaction and player ratings and stuff. Um, I know I know it was it was really bad in terms of from the uh, from the start from the get go with the with the lineups, like mm -hmm. um, especially questionable um, decision with he did he did okay with with Elliot but I don't know. Um, you you feel the strongest like your best players in it because it's it's the quarters of Europa and um it, it just everything didn't didn't um, didn't go into plan um our best uh, informed player in Mactan and um, you could say Macando um, <laughs> did who's been performing they they haven't been they haven't been the best um as of what happened yet, uh, in the evening last night so. Uh, we'll we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna be th those kind of um, people where you know just just one game and change the whole tide. Just gonna be calm and collective. We'll see what happens this weekend. And without further ado, I'm gonna leave with um, some questions. One sec, let me get the pen and paper ready, bro. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Drifty, by the way, um, I'm gonna finish up the uh, the gentleman this weekend just before the Palace game. So. If you if you watched it, yeah. Um say say like I've got one I've got one one episode left, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying. I actually love Guy Rich's uh style of directing, you know what I mean? I just do you know do you know what's so great about Richie is he yeah. manages to make something so serious have fun like funny moments and comedy in it. He's he's so good at doing yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. good at it. Yeah, that, that's 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 always his uh that's his typical um way of doing the mixing up blending comedy and action and yeah yeah yeah, yeah most yeah, most definitely. of the most of his movies are like that which which i thoroughly enjoy so far um so firstly really, well, that's, that's really good 
Beef on Netflix. Really good. Yeah, I haven't heard of that, but uh, I'll, I'll tune in because I have like a stack of uh, shows that that's that's been lining up. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I bet Kel's uh, Kel's uh, pending um, series is even more stacked than when than we both. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have no idea, oh. bro. I, I'm, yeah, I, it's gonna take me a month to catch up on stuff I need. So I still even watch Snowfall. How about that? Yeah, man. No, no, I'm looking forward to that, though. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's one of them ones, but it is what it is. So uh, the first thing uh, that I have is: do you do you do you think arguably Liverpool has the best catalog in terms of right back uh, in history, um, the linear heritage? Uh, going in, back, I, well, I, have, I I don't. I personally didn't watch uh, those times when Rob Jones and um, Steve Nichol, but like even Steve Staunton, who's been uh, a player that highly regarded by the fans, um, even Arbeloa, and then even Finnan, the uh, yeah, the you know what I mean, like Steady Eddie. And then we have Connor Bradley, TAA. You know what I mean. Mm. Um, arguably, uh, among the clubs that uh, we're competing, um, so that's one question. And then, secondly, does Jota remind remind you guys of uh, a certain city forward named Aguero? Just minus the uh, the rapid. Well, Aguero used to be fast, but you know, just basically the way. What I'm saying is the way that his IQ, his movement, his uh, one shot, one goal approach, you know what I mean? Like you could just have that um, brim of confidence when, when he's on the field and like the way his presence, even um, center backs got shook of, over, um, over time when, when, when he's on the field, like just, just the way he showed up, like he's a uh, deadly fox in the box, you know what I mean? So, that's that's the second one, and third, um, you know, with the preseason, right? Yeah. Um, so we have like mid, is it the winter break? Like, uh, I think I remember Liverpool and Arsenal went to Dubai. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't think we got a winter break this year because of fixtures, but I think most teams did. Yeah, yeah, but so, but basically, like that that um, that stint of not having games and matches. What I'm saying is like, because of games becoming more and more, and then like the Champions League is um, piling up the fixtures starting from mm. next season. Do you guys reckon that in in general context, like general overview, clubs have to alter their um, like conditioning drills, you know, like for, for the summer just before the season starts because we have the... Um, just because of the introduction of those uh, that two weeks or ten day period in in January, if you know what I mean, like just be more like um, getting familiarized with how to start with um, the season, like in terms of more tactical, more systematic ploy, more technical, more ball playing rather than um, you know be more um, fitness priority. You know what I mean? Because we have like, like uh, Jamal said, the Euros are coming up, the Coppas are coming up. If you know what I mean, like players just can't get straight back to um, yeah. square one with uh, like the blip test. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I just want you guys. I just want to know. I just want to hear your thoughts. Uh, those are the three questions that I have. And I, what I will leave before I jump out is, Inshallah, we'll get 21 out of 21 from the seven games remaining. God willing, bro. Yeah, God fingers willing. Fingers crossed. God and, willing. Uh, and, you know, just to, you know, I, I haven't had a good sleep for the last month or so. Let's let's be real because of the fasting and whatnot. But let's hope it, it does pay off. But uh, big up to the callers and the community. The, big up the to you, best bro. Ever. And, uh, yeah, can can't wait to hear your guys on, on the answers. Bless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yourself, yeah. Tom Izzy, bro. Hold them. Yeah, keep in touch. Okay, bro. Yeah. Deep, bro. 
Right, so the first question Tom is he had, do we have the best right back heritage in the Prem era or in the in in modern history? So you look at players like Rob Jones, um Steve Finnan, Glenn Glenn Johnson, Arbeloa, Trent, Connor Bradley now. Have I missed any names? I don't think who did we have before Finnan? It wasn't too great before Finnan. No, Finn and, Finn and, uh, Finn, yeah, I said Arbeloa. Finn was here before Arbeloa. Um, I don't know, you know, because as, as soon as you said it, I did think to myself, Arsenal. About Arsenal had Lauren. But Lee yeah, Dixon. Uh, Lee Dixon. Um, currently. After that, after that it went. No, Stagner was good as well. Stagner was good. Oh, Klein. Stagner. Klein. We had Klein as well. Yes, we did. Sagnar, um, Man City, Man United as well. Chelsea, Ivanovic, Chelsea, Chelsea yeah. Chelsea, Even Mario Melchior was good as well. That's a tough one, to be honest. That's oh, a tough Marcus Babel. We had Marcus Babel. You know what? It might be us. It might actually be us. I forgot, but how can I forget about Babel? Oh yeah, yeah. We've had some good right backs, man, for real. It might actually be Marcus Babel. We have actually had some really good right backs. Yeah, it might be us for real. You got Finn and Arbeloa, Babel, Trent, Klein, Johnson. Yeah, it probably is us to be honest. Probably is us. Yeah. Man, Man City have had Zabaleta, Walker. It's only really been them two though, to be fair. Chelsea is and Tagna, Ivanovic, Melchior, like you said. Yeah, it's probably us. It probably is us. Yeah. I didn't realize we've had so many great right backs come through the doors. Big shout, big up Tom Izzy. He also asks, would you see Jota as comparable to Aguero in the sense of his one shot, one kill playing style? I have a little theory. I think Jota's he's almost between a Suarez and a Fowler. He's not as polished as Fowler, but I don't think he's as like what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a bullet. Like, Suarez is kind of a bull in a china shop, isn't it? I don't think he's that. I don't think he's refined as fi- as refined as Fowler either. Like, he's almost a blend of the two. Not as good as the two, uh, by, by, all, by all means, but I feel like mm. he's a blend of those two, if anything. Yeah, Jota's just that guy, isn't it, man? He's just that guy. It, it goes all the way back to when we first got him and a lot of people... We're a little bit skeptical, but yeah, including myself, he's, he's come on leaps and bounds. Like, even though I was over the moon, as you know, when we signed him and I knew he would bang for us, there's still a part of me that I didn't think he would get this prolific because no, when he was at um, when he was at Wolves, when he was at Atletico, he was more of like a support striker rather than an out and out number nine. And he's yeah. just his finishing has just got better and better and better. Um. Yeah, if only Jota could be injury free for a whole season, man. Like, no, special shout to, sorry, special shout out to Conroy in the chat. I ain't spoken to Conroy in a minute. I hope you're well. Joe, really yeah, off, up, really quick off topic as well. I was actually speaking to um uh Saif, who's also a Liverpool content creator. Literally, I bumped into Saif in um in Tesco last week and like we've been We've been doing content and speaking for years, and it's literally the first time we've actually physically seen each other. And it was by off chance. We we'll speak about Conroy. Mm. So big up Conroy. Yeah, if if I know this is a bold statement, but I think if Jota was completely injury free and like played 40, 45 games minimum every season, I think he'd probably be one of the most sought after forwards in world football. Like yeah. genuinely, I I think he'd be the type of player that we could easily cash in and get like one twenty four if we really wanted to. Well, if Jot's fit for most of the season, then I think we we come to be top of the league. Yeah, he got that injury at the worst time, man. Right yeah. before like yeah. the Man U, Arsenal, and all that little the Man City. Right before we had that period of all the tough teams where we needed his clinicalness. So, man, it's it's been annoying, but. Yeah, he's yeah. Jota's yeah. he's Jota's different, man. Tommy Jesus says, Tommy Do you think we should change the way we are doing our conditioning in pre-season given how their how vigorous the season has just been or is going to be? Vigorous how, how vigorous the international 
competitions are going to be in the summer and then also the fact of the Champions League increasing the amount of games as well. Do we now need to stop being so fitness driven and, and more like looking at playing with the ball from earlier in, in pre-season and working on touch, finesse, ball control, all of those things that come on the football pitch as opposed to let's get as fit as you can as early as you can. Well, I mean, self-proclaimed energy merchant in clock says that's the, the key to his system, right? So with him going, I think we'll probably at least half the intensity of, of what we do. Because remember, there's pressing and then there's gang and pressing. They're two totally different things. And we do the gang and pressing. It's like, it's relentless. It's just constant all the time. That's why the players do get injured and tired. So I don't fully, fully know how Amarim operates in training. Say, for example, if it is him who gets it. Xabi Alonso, I heard his training methods are brilliant. The players love it. It's fun, but obviously it's still good. So I think we would have enjoyed that. Yeah, we'll definitely be way less intense. Like, we play, what, two, three preseason games more than everyone else. We do double training sessions on the same day. There's games. Our preseason's madness. Like, it's, it's it would put me off playing for Klopp. If I'm being honest, the way we we're so intense in preseason, so I've I have a little theory on it, and I've said this previously. I don't think it's a coincidence that you see Man City get stronger and fitter throughout the season, whereas you see Liverpool hit a peak around February, March, and then slowly try and try and maintain, yeah. but slowly diminish. I think mm. it's, we come out the gate so fast. If you look at Man City every season, they usually start quite slow. Like in yeah. terms of getting going, they rotate a lot at the beginning of the season, and then come April, May, it's like you're you're playing against a juggernaut. I think that's I think that's on purpose. I think Pep's notorious for barely playing any um for playing that many preseason games as well. He doesn't play that many preseason games either, and they start preseason a lot later than everyone else. So it's like Shout out to Daps. Daps always says he's like at the beginning of the season, they don't re really worry because as long as they kind of just keep pace, then they know they'll get stronger as the season goes on. So it's almost that we're overtraining almost, it feels like. Yeah, and, and I think that's probably the reason why the year we did win the league, we absolutely stormed it because we took advantage of how well we played at the beginning and we got to the point where once City started playing well, they couldn't catch us anyway. It didn't really yeah. matter anymore. Um, and yeah. I think that's probably always what Klopp tries to do. But unfortunately, Man City are so good, they're always there or thereabouts. And in the end, they always end up just about getting over the line. But yeah, it's definitely going to be different. So it's going to take some getting used to, you know, not having the intensity and the fast pace and all that stuff. We've been used to it for nine years. It's going to take some getting used to. Very true. Right, let's get the next caller in. <clears throat> you got it? Yeah. Bruno Banton. Hi. <laughs> First up, of all, I got the elephant out of the room. Yesterday's performance was absolutely dreadful. In fact, I'll go one further. The game against United, absolutely dreadful. Spineless, whatless, gutless, no spirit. No determination, no desire, absolutely dreadful. They need to take a long, hard look at themselves because that was absolutely dreadful. And this is a warning to rival fans. Arsenal, who have not won a title, by the way, since James Blunt, okay, who haven't won a trophy, who have not won a title since September. And I'm not talking about the month here. I'm talking about September. If you know who I'm talking about, you know exactly who I'm talking about. She made a song called Cry For You. There's a, that's another thing. And as for flipping Man United, and this is a warning, United fans, I wouldn't get so cocky either because um, didn't you lot get thumped 7-0 last year? And also, you haven't won the Premier League trophy since 2012-13 season. So what is that? Flipping James Blunt, what is that? Beyonce's flipping collaboration with um, Jay-Z. Jay so, so if I were you lot, 
I would stay in your own lane or suffer the consequences. <laughs> yeah? And this is the bit where I banter Tottenham as well. Tottenham, I who haven't won a trophy. I knew it. <laughs> who haven't won a trophy, by the way, since... I'll tell you what, they haven't won a trophy since Balamori. They haven't won a trophy since the Teletubbies. They haven't won a trophy since the Hardy Boys. <laughs> they have not won a trophy since Roxy and Ronnie was in EastEnders. Yeah? They haven't won a trophy. Okay. So no Tottenham fan can sit here and try to ban to Liverpool. Don't even think about it. Because you'll get shut down instantly. <laughs> and I'm going to do a bit of commentary here. <laughs> so I might as well. And this is going to be United versus Liverpool. So this is a bit of a hinge. Salah. And now it's Torres. Edge of the box. Torres! What an absolute wallop! Fernando Torres! Has absolutely destroyed United on the edge of the box. He absolutely walloped it in the top corner. Nothing the goalkeeper could do. Absolutely nothing. Oh, it's a free kick on the edge of the box here. George Scolari is going to take it. Oh, but look at this. Look at this. Randy Orton has arrived in the stadium and he has gone and attacked Roy Keane. He has kicked him right in the back of the head. Oh, he's RKO'd him. RKO'd him. Hey, nothing you can say. There's nothing you can do to me. And now Ed just come and he speared Randy Orton. Uh, what's going on here? Now, since when do you have a... Oh, my goodness gracious me. Somebody's having a wedding now on the pitch. Now, since when does that happen? And now the fans are running on the pitch in protest. It's all kicking off it. Alan... Alexandra George is getting involved here. Mike Jordan's getting involved. And Alex Toby is getting involved. And Alex Graham is getting involved here. And Michael Barak has just kicked Drogba in the back of the head. It's all kicking off it. Alex Scott's getting involved here. And now George Jr. is getting involved here. Now Sergio Ramos is getting involved with Pepe. Now what's going on here? It's all kicking off it. What started a minor spat has now turned into something very serious. Oh, he's grabbed him by the neck here. And the referee's gone over to VAR. And we all know what's going to happen here. And by the way, VAR better be on their best behavior. Because if they're not, one of them's going to get fired by the um, PGML, if you know. If they don't behave themselves, they're going to get sacked next week if they're not careful. Uh-oh, I've just heard some information that apparently Paul Tierney has just been sacked because he's not doing his job properly. He can give it gob. He can argue all he likes. He wasn't, he wasn't doing his job properly. He sent off the wrong player. Oh, oh now look at this. It's all kicking off. And now, and now Aaron Lennon's getting involved with George Ar Ar Castaño. And now it's Paul Ara Castagno. Castagno! Wonderful goal! George Ara Castagno! It's an absolute corker. It's an absolute warper of a shot from Ara Castagno. He couldn't hit it any better. It's an absolute warper of a shot from Ara Castagno. He can give it gob. He can argue all he likes. And oh, now look at this. It's all kicking off it. It's still, there's a huge fight here between George Graham, Alec Castagno, and Alex Scott. And now Neymar's getting involved here. Neymar's getting involved with Nick, with Nick Jr. here. And Ronaldinho has gone, oh, he's, Ronaldinho's kicked in there. He's, it's all getting involved here. Ronaldinho and Kaka and Pele, they're all getting involved here. And Maradona has kicked Pele right in the back of the head. What is this, 1947? <laughs> this is like 1947 weddings this anyway as much as I'd like to continue I better get going like I, said, like, I said, like I said rivals stay in your own lane or suffer the consequences learn from expressions got very cocky and look what happened big bucks as well 
Look what happened with him. Got all cocky. And look what happened. Stay in your own lane or suffer the consequences. That's the warning. Don't start something you can't finish. And as for the players, fix up. The performance was absolutely dead. Fix up. Anyway, I've got to go because I'm going to go down here. Otherwise, I'll be here till Christmas Eve. Thank you very much for having me. Always a pleasure, bro. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Big up, Bruno. The one and only Bruno the Cruise. Big up, Bruno. If you haven't already, guys, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Right, let's get our next caller in right now. Zed, are you there, bro? Zed, you're on mute at the moment. Can you hear me? Yes, hear you, bro. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You? Not too bad, brother. Good, good, good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to... I know you're Still, in pain. When you have a deep yeah. breath like that, I know you're in pain. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a bit tough. Uh, what do you think about Van Dyke's performance yesterday? Oh, wow. Um, honestly, it wasn't great, mm. but I don't think it was bad. I actually think he was a good performer. I gave him, I think I said I gave him a 7 out of 10. Oh, okay. And I, yeah, so I thought it was a good performance. It wasn't great. Yeah. It wasn't mm. far from poor. Problem is, um, I don't know if you saw, I think first half, there was a there was a part of the game where he was jogging and the player yeah. caught up to him and tackled him. Did you see that part? Where he was just which player was talking earlier, about it? Van Dyke, where he was just so cavalier and just yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle, I watched it back in. I was talking about there's and so he many things. As as you was, saw so that, right? this when, was this before I joined the stream or was I on? No, I think you might have been there, you know. It might have been on 30th minute. I don't really remember. Yeah, I think but you, seeing I think that gave there. me flashbacks. flashbacks. Flashbacks of last year, Van Dyke last year, where he backs off. And just lets the player do what he wants. Honestly, I think it was just a mentality thing. I think these players think, yeah, it's Europa League. We can half ass it. We can be 70%. They were already looking at the final of the Europa League. They never respected the opponent. It was just... Don't get me started on Sobersly as well, honestly. <sighs> I said, I was I was saying this earlier on as well, bro. Have you watched back when Soboslai lost the ball and then yeah, he actually could have just tracked the runner and stopped the goal and he just yeah. walked? It was his mistake, you know. Exactly. exactly. Honestly, Madness. right now, Central European Catamol. And I'm not exaggerating. Oh wow. Honestly. It is just atrocious. And Good Nunes, job, honestly, no, I, to be honest, I might be being a bit hyperbolic. But I've, <laughs> I've still not recovered from yesterday. That's in the middle European catamo. Honestly, wow. honestly, it's just that is harsh. no fight in the middle. Nothing. And the amount of amount of, amount of times. We get we get chances right in the first 10, 15 minutes to put ourselves ahead, and then you get Nunes. I don't know what he was doing. I think I think he was trying to chip the keeper. But yeah, it's just application. Exactly. I think that's what separates players. It's just application. But yeah, do you know what? Do you do yeah. you think that there's a possibility that like I mean you you're pretty much bang on the money actually when I think about it. But when you think about all these like little silly things that we're noticing that happen during the game, like yeah. Van Dijk walking and the summer slide, and even like you just mentioned with that Nunes chance where you think yeah. to yourself, really and truthfully, normally Nunes just goes around the goalkeeper and, and has an empty net or he hits that with his left first time. The fact mm. he tried to let come across him and do like a little cheeky chip yeah, yeah. and then laugh. I think you're right. I think a lot of our players, this is one time, Cal, when I'd actually say you're bang on when you say arrogance. You know, sometimes you say, was it arrogance? And a lot of the time, I don't really feel like it is. 
I think yesterday was, I think we felt like we could have as much fun as we wanted, take our time, and eventually it will just happen. And it's we just like told people in Europa. It's actually been like yeah. that in Europa. Like, here's mm. the thing. Yesterday's arrogance for me started from the starting lineup. Mm, I agree. With all the changes, six changes, isn't it? That for me, that's where the arrogance started. But at the same time, though, if Klopp doesn't rotate, we say that he's he's silly and he's burning out players. And then when he does rotate, then we say that he shouldn't. So it is a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. No, but kind of. Sp Spartak, Spartak at home, where we had really had a five-one lead. We play a, a strong team, but yet we play Atalanta at home and we don't. Like it, it's weird for me. But sorry, it's sorry, it's taking just... your time, so bro. No, it's all right. It's just yeah, we've got seven games to save the season. Honestly, seven games, and um, yeah, we'll see, man. Might be a long one. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah thank you, bro. Uh, big we'll up, see. bro. Big up. Cheers. Big up, bro. Yeah. Seven cup yeah. finals, effectively. All right, let's get our next caller in. He used to have locks, now he doesn't. He calls himself Colonel Zabiri. Welcome back to the show, brother. Hey, big up the man, them. Drift there. Big up yourself, man. Kyle, how you What's doing, going man? On, it's been a minute, man. Yeah, how you doing, bro? <laughs> Oh, you're breaking up, bro. You're breaking up, bro. You there, bro? Ah, uh, I think we've lost him. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you're back, you're back, you're back. All right, uh, good. You're gonna go, um, bro. Yeah, now the last time I remember, it's choppy. All right, let me um yeah bring somebody else on. I'm gonna try to give you man a thumbs up when I'm good. Cool, cool, cool. Ah, cool, 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 bro, cool, cool. Big up, Keith. You there, bro? Yo, yo. How you guys doing? You right? Not too bad, Keith. How are yeah, you, bro? Bro, bro, bro? Yeah, man. Thank you. But obviously, I'm not good. Obviously, because of that result, you know, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Free now is. Is a madness, and to be fair, you guys are right about the arrogance thing. It's, it's crazy how we approach that game, to be fair. But I want to speak about something different because, to be fair, Loop was annoying me right now, so I don't really want to speak about how we're performing, to be fair. So I want to ask you guys this question because I was speaking with my dad about this, right? And I was saying, because obviously, you guys were able to watch like the 2000 era, the 2010 era as well. I want to ask, is there any player that who retired who we think as fans was amazing, but you guys watched with your eyes and say, nah, he wasn't that good, you know? And then the reason why I asked that is because I spoke to my dad and he said that Rio Ferdinand was was not that good. And I, and I, thought, and I think, yeah, that's what he said. And I think Rio Ferdinand is a quality defender, but my dad said, I watched him week in, week out. He was error prone. And I'm thinking, whoa, that's, that's mad, isn't it? And <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, like, a day later, I saw a clip on Twitter of Kevin Phillips, Megan Rio Ferdinand, is scoring in bottom corner. Kevin Phillips, you know. I'm thinking, whoa, that's mad. So I just want to ask you guys, is there any players that we as young fans think, oh, man, they're amazing, but you watched them week out, week out, and thought, they went all that. You, think, you know what I'm saying? So, like, maybe, yeah, like, three, get, yeah, maybe like, three players... You know, because I know Drifty's gonna mention some players. I can tell, <laughs> but yeah, I think I know who Drifty's gonna mention. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Also, I'm interested to see what you've got to say as well, Cal. Because yeah, 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 that would be that would be good, man. Because it's just crazy. Because the good thing is, because you guys got to watch them week in week out, and we didn't. So I just want to know what you guys think as well, because you know yeah. everybody says mad things on Twitter. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know you and I know Callum's gonna argue with Drifty on some of these players, man. But yeah, <laughs> that's probably one. You I know what? Here's he, he, one thing I will say, though, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think what a lot of people forget, a lot of people forget. Um, maybe the youngers so much don't even realize social media and the internet being so readily available now Change means that 
music is is in a hyperbolic kind of like fishbowl do you get what i mean where you, you can't hide from anything you can see whatever you want now i could go and look at any player we're linked with right now and there'll be some video saying welcome to liverpool already up and there'll be all these clips of this player <laughs> 10 15 20 years ago that was a complete non-existent thing mm. and you see people like rio and that as special as they were they did make a lot of mistakes but you yeah. don't remember mistakes when social media is not around and there's not clips of it everywhere and people are people just remember the good times do you know what i mean a lot of people forget these things it's like the Henri example Henri is an absolute legend there is no two ways about this it. one of the best players i've ever watched in my life but if yeah. he was playing in today's day by the time he was 29 he was already on the decline by the time he was 30 people was thinking like who what, what's this version of Henri? when Barcelona won the Champions League. Henri wasn't really playing that well. Like, I think a lot of people forget that. Like, he wasn't crap or anything. Like, he wasn't playing that well. It was Arsenal Henri in that peak period of about six to eight years. But nowadays, if you fall off by the time you're 29, people will say, oh, how good are you really? And rare, 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 and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, by the time Henri yeah. was the same age as Salah now, he was playing in America and his career was over. <laughs> like, a lot of people forget no, these things, true. do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, true. Like, people forget these things. So, yeah, it's, it, yeah it, was, it was very, very fishbowly back in the day. But Drift, if we're being fair, could you not say the same thing for our boy Gerard, though? Who? Gerard. Who? <laughs> now, nah, you know what I said, Carl. You know what I said, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <then who? laughs> Said it again. Who? <laughs> Who's that brother? <laughs> Gerald? Who? <laughs> hey, no, I'm just saying, bro. I was just saying, yeah. You must be talking about Gerald PK, bro. <laughs> <laughs> deep, Gerard. <laughs> oh. But yeah, man, that's the question I want to ask you guys. And hopefully, I won't like maybe like give like three players or something like that. Just, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Make it more difficult for you. But, yeah, man, obviously, thank you guys for bringing me on, nah, man. Big up yourself, Keith, bro. Great question yeah. as well, man. Yeah, no, nah, big up, bro. Big up yourself. Yeah. Hopefully, ne next next time I call you, we are winning. So, thank you, bro. God willing, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah see pray, you. Thank you. Big up, G. Big up. Big up. All right. Yeah. What, what do they say, Cal? Hurt, 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 hurt people hurt people, yeah. That's what they say, isn't it? Say again? Hurt people hurt people. That's what they say, right? <laughs> so I'm hurting at the moment. I'm about to dunk on some people. But yeah, go on, you go first. <laughs> you see Rio, yeah? Rio was absolutely fantastic. But do you know what I think happens? I think people speak about Rio now as this, as this, almost he was invincible. I fully agree with Keith's dad. He actually did have an error in him. Like off the top of my yeah. head, and again... I know my brain works very different to other football fans. Like, I, I don't know what it is. I just, I can remember certain things in games and stuff. Like, I can remember when Torres scored against him when Ben Ayun set him up. That, like, Rio didn't see the run and, and he couldn't catch up with uh, Torres. I remember they were playing against Portsmouth, I think it was. And the ball was coming over from a goal kick. And Rio, or was it Portsmouth? It was the other Portsmouth before Fulham. And instead of looking behind and see what's going on, Rio, the most casual backheader you've seen in your life, just went like that. And then a striker ran onto it and scored. I remember Van der Sar was coming out to collect the ball. Rio's passed it without looking up and scored an own goal. Like Rio made a lot of mistakes. Even the one against um, Bellamy when um, they beat, um, when Owen got the winner, the 4 3 game. Like he, guys, it's not my birthday today. I just want to make that. <laughs> It's out, it's yeah, I know. I just, I, <laughs> yes. I, come on, not my man. birthday. It's not my birthday. Big up <laughs> for the love and that. It's not my birthday. Um, I remember a lot of mistakes that Rio made, but I also remember some of the games where he was just immense, like, and no one could do anything to him. So I do mm. think you're right, Drift, in the sense of we look at yesteryear's players and almost think they were godlike and didn't make mistakes. Now like, I'll be real with you. Van Dyke makes a lot less mistakes than I've seen Rio and Carragher and all them man make. Like, them man made mm. mistakes on a regular. But they just yeah. said that social media and internet weren't really around. They got away with it. In terms of retirement... It's a bit like Drogba, for example, bro. Drogba was one of the most elite clutch forwards when it came to big games and finals and all that. 
But a lot of people... Re- season, he only hit 20 goals in the season once, I think it was, for Chelsea. He yeah. wasn't prolific. He wasn't like... Do you get what I mean? Like, it wasn't like... Even a little bit like Michael Owen, bro. We only hit 20 league goals once. Like, yeah. and these were top, top world-class forwards. But everybody just scrutinises now because it's so fishbowly. But like I yeah. said, Drogba got 20 goals in the, seat, in, in the league once. But we lured him because he was... Because we remember the clutch. We remember yeah. just how good he was in big games. He was a bully. If it was a semi-final or a final or, or something like that, you knew he was turning up and batting you up. But yeah, it, it's, it's yeah, it's just a bit weird, isn't it? Um, so for me, an overrated player. Um Shall I go first? Yeah, go on. I think you're gonna can I, can I guess who you're gonna say? Go on. Lampard. No, I wasn't even thinking about oh, okay. it still. I was people. I think Robert not, Pires is mad overrated. Ooh. Yeah, I think Pires is overrated, bro. Oh boy, let me get some water. It's your time, Jeff. You go, you do your thing, bro. <laughs> like, Jeez, maybe I should have spiked oh, this water with something. Still, I didn't expect that one. Oh, obviously, he was a super talented player. There's no doubt about that. But people, but Arsenal fans and and some people if we're talking about the best left-sided players to ever play in the league they say his name not for me not for me Perez was special i think, I think Perez was special see, see here's the thing bro so a lot of people look at some players of today right and they'll say ah oh, just because you're skillful doesn't make you a good player Perez was another one of those players like that very skillful but his productivity weren't consistent. He wasn't oh. week in week constantly doing it. He wasn't, bro. Gee. He was just good on the eye, and people remember that part. Oh. I'm telling you. Drift. He, he would be the one that would play the ball across, and Jungberg would make the late running. Oh, Drift. Drift. He was good, but I think he was overrated. No. Perez was sick. I rate Perez really highly. I can't lie. Not for me, man. Not for me. I rate him very highly. Um, an overrated player. Um, I'm actually I'm struggling with this one. I can't even lie. I got another one if you want. Go on. Now, this one's really gonna rattle some people. <laughs> and again, super talented player. Super talented player. I think Giggs is a bit overrated. Oh, <laughs> we've had this debate. We've had this debate. I think Giggs is a bit overrated still. I think people look at Giggs, the person, and rightfully so, look at him and think, do not like that guy. Giggs was such a ballish. I'll tell you what did it for me. The fact that Giggs then moved into centre midfield and was still doing the madness up until he was, what, like 41. Brother, that's insane. Was he really not left wing? Oh, a hundred percent, bro. He did. But, but see, here's the thing, yeah. Because because what he asked is people that you think are overrated. And you gotta remember, say we did a scale of one to ten to just to just make it very basic and simple for people to understand, right? If you say ah oh, gigs is a ten, as an example, I would say he's an eight and a half. So I think he's a bit overrated. But eight and a half is still an extremely high score. I'm not saying these players were rubbish or they weren't good or whatever. Because that's what I think people need to understand as well. If you say you think someone's overrated, you're just saying that the hype that they were getting, you don't quite think he was worthy of that hype. So for me, everyone's going to go and give Giggs a 10. He'd get an eight and a half for me. Brilliant player. But I think he's slightly overrated. I don't actually think he is the special guy. Because here's the thing, bro. First, when he first came out, like that first four or five years when he was electric, yes, but then he changed his game as he got a bit older and then he wasn't quite that anymore. And I think people keep on remembering that beginning first couple years and think he did that the whole time and, and he didn't. Yeah, I know, Jeff, man. I told you I was going to rattle some people still. Yeah, you rattled me and I, they're, they're two clubs I despise as well. So 
I'm trying to think who else. And then I'll set else. Go on. Oh, I think Vidic is overrated. That's one player. Oh, oh I would have forgot that. Bang on Vidic the money, bro. Vidic is overrated. Very good defender, but people speak about him like he was just this invincible guy. Like Vidic was bailed out a lot by Van der Sar and by Rio. Hmm. You want another one? Let's Absolute just do group. it. Go on. We're here. Let's just do it. During the time they both played for Chelsea, Cavalio was better than John Terry. I know. I agree with that. Chelsea fans won't let you say that. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I agree with that. I agree with that. Terry was sick, though. Again, despicable human being. Mm -hmm. But, bro, as a footballer, Terry was sick, man. But if he was better than than Terry for the while he was at Chelsea, and you think about the fact that he'd already won the Champions League with Porto, is there not a conversation that Cavallo was a better centre-back than John Terry then? No, because they didn't play that long together, did they? I think it was three years, I think. I don't even think it was three years. Was it not? Was it only two? It was that long. Terry was yeah. sick, though. Terry was such a good centre-back. He was. But Such I think Cavalier was better than him. No, he was at the time. But John Terry was quite young then as well. Cavalier was way more experienced, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. So, and then Terry just grew, like, he grew into a monster, man. Like, despised the guy as a human being. But as a footballer, can't speak high, high, high enough of John Terry, man. The guy was a footballer. A proper defender, man. Proper defender. <clears throat> You know what, Ty? Pete Gallas probably could have a conversation about... Obviously, his longevity is not as good as Terry, but Pete Gallas, Pete Gallas was a problem. He was yeah, a Pete Gallas bad was Pete, Pete Gallas, Gallas was, was... He's what we want Joe Gomez to be. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. Yeah, he could yeah. play sick as a left-back, sick as a right-back, and sick as a centre-back. He's what we want, and he had consistency with it as well. He's what we we he's what Gomez should be. He's what Gomez should be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I know I've rattled a couple men, you and Arsenal friends. I'm gonna so, say yeah. one player. Ozil at Arsenal is overrated. Ozil outside of Arsenal wasn't overrated. Ozil at Arsenal was overrated. Well, here's the new one, bro. And I'm I'm not gassing you here, bro. Oh, this is serious. It. Arsenal fans are currently having a discussion about Odegaard being better than Ozil and Bergkamp. Oh. And what no, I saw allergic. a lot of them I'm saying is... I'm allergic to nonsense. You see that? <laughs> Uh, and what a lot of them are saying is he's actually the perfect blend of both. I know you're a Dennis Burkamp stan, so I know how much that's going to annoy you. Bro, to, to mention Ozil with the same breath as Burkamp is blasphemy, bro. Odegaard can't sit at the table with Burkamp. He just can't. Bro, Dennis in, Bergkamp. It, it, sorry, go. On. Dennis Bergkamp sits at the table with Del Piero, Roberto Baggio, Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldinho. Yeah, I disagree with that. You don't think Bergkamp sits at the table with them? With Ronaldinho and Zidane, no. For real? I'm being deadly serious. What? Hey, Burkamp is that he guy. He doesn't sit at that table. He sits further back. He's in the same room, but not, not at that table. Not with Zidane, Ronaldinho and them, man. He, he don't sit at that I table. Know. He sits there, you know, bro. He sits there, I'm telling you, bro. He sits there, bro. He's in that. He's on that table, bro. No, <laughs> Zidane level, bro. No. <laughs> Sorry. Bro, Bergie, man. Burkamp was... Bergkamp was sensational, bro. You're doing the Bergkamp most. Like, Dan and Ronaldinho, bro. Like, yeah, I think Bergkamp's it. But, but them, them lot might have like more highlighted moments in their career and reached higher levels because they won the World Cup, etc. Et but we're talking talent. 
Uh, 100% bad camp sits at that table, bro. 100%. I'm not even being disrespectful when I say this because everyone's got phobias and stuff. But even the sense that he didn't play loads of European games away as well, like... That yeah, because he wouldn't fly, yeah. Like, and I'm not disrespecting yeah. his phobia here because I fully get it. I hate flying myself. But if mm. he's not playing in those games when the others are, I, I think that's a conversation as well. Because I think that's that's when you see the top players really come to the fore when you're going to hostile territory, big European nights, and you still produce. Like, I've seen Zidane do that. I've seen Ronaldinho do that. I've seen Gerard do that. I've seen Lampard do that. I've seen Skulls do that. I've seen some of the best players to, to grade the game do that. We didn't get to see Burkham do it, unfortunately. I've seen Thierry Henry do it. Boy. He, he does know. for me. He can't, he can't sit at the table with Ronaldinho and Zidane. He can't. No, nah, he does, man. He does. But again, it's all opinions. It's yeah, all opinions. It is. Right. Let's go and get the man, the myth, the legend, Zabiri in the building. Hey, big up, man. How you guys doing, man? Bro. It's been a minute. Yeah, could I'm be good, man. Hey, bro, the other day, no word of a lie. I, when I realized we was doing a calling show, I thought to myself, oh, we ain't seen Zabiri in a minute. I swear, I'm not even bullshitting. So when I saw you when I was like, "Raw, that is mad ironic." That literally, I was thinking about the show, and then you was, and we, because we ain't seen you for a little while still. Well, you ain't running the show for a minute, man. I've been checking the calendars. I marked up the dates and that, and then I don't see no <laughs> notification. I'm like, "Yo, I think these yeah, men are throwing the towel it. still." <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm like, "Yeah, these men throwing the towel. These men can't be coming up every Friday wrong in that, bro. It's exhausting, you know." But <laughs> We're not here to pull up receipts like Jamal and them, man. <laughs> Bro, Friday has always been a vibes, you know what I mean? And um, whether cows right or wrong or whether drifty, you out there today, you're out there drifty still. Um, but it's always been a vibe. It's always been, you know what I'm saying? We're having a good time, even though it's not a good time. Sometimes it's not a good time, you know, coming up runner up, you know, season after season complaining about who's the reason why we're coming runner up you know what i'm saying working out the what ifs and that you know what i'm saying thinking certain fit man gonna come back they ain't coming back um listen overrated player tiago at liverpool messi after barcelona like the list goes on and we have to call it you know what i'm trying to say salah after afghan overrated always but that's some man's goat in that um <laughs> I just wanted to check the temperature on you, man. Um, <laughs> you, man, chase me out the room and tell me I'm tripping because I gave the transfer window 10 out of 10. And I'm telling you, man, like, yo, we're going to win the league. We're going to win the corner. You, man, is like, raw, man. I mean, if we get a six, you know what I'm saying? We can fix up. How crazy is it that the only position we're not really worried about is the six? Oh, no, I'm still worried about it. Cal, listen, you, you don't count, bro, because you don't drink alcohol and indulge in debaucheries and you still got weak immune system. You're out there with, <laughs> with your stuff, Cal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of your takes, Cal, you're out there, man. Listen, for a guy that's so healthy, every time I see you, you got hay fever, bro. I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know, man. Listen, Cap, I'm not telling you to drink or smoke. All I'm telling you is trust the six. Don't have to worry about the six, bro. The six is good, man. Like, worry about other things. Um, I think the strikers is a worry. I don't think it's down to injuries. Um, I think left back is a worry. Um, I don't think it's a, it's a surprise we're praising Joey over there. Think about that. We got two left backs. And none of them performance eclipse Joey's performance. That is mad. Yeah. Like, look at the game yesterday as well. I think it's mad. No one is talking about Kelleher after that game, which is, should be the only negative. And the one positive is the one guy that's been scapegoated. Bro, Gakpo has an amazing game yesterday. And look at the result. It's crazy. That should be the two talking points. Why is Gakpo the best player yesterday? And why is Kelleher the worst player yesterday? Man doing up Onana settings, bro. Worse than Onana. Diving over the ball in that. 
I don't hate mm. acting like he's Allison. Who, you know who's guessing? Heard, who's guessing this this goalkeeper, bro? What I've heard is I don't know how true this is, but a few people are speculating that why his game ended up quite bad is he didn't have a concussion, but apparently like he was a bit like dazed. Could you remember when the ball got blasted in his eye and he had a black eye? I don't know if you could literally see he had a black eye. So some people nah, stick up in, drift, <laughs> stick up in, stick up in, stick up in, yeah, drift. You know me, bro. I, I got the emotions in there. I saw the <laughs> save and I'm like, I'm like, fuck, it's a Carrius moment, you know, because it, it was way too early. You remember when yeah. Carrius got concussed in the final? I'm like, rah. I saw the black eye. I'm like, rah, nah, this is way too early in the game, you know. Mm. And I'm like, fuck, man, he's done. That happened, Drift, and I'm like, yo, he's done. And sh so said, so done, man. Man was done out here. Couldn't see the ball on his left side was weak. Man, man looked shaky out there. You seen the whole game. It's the worst we've seen him for some time. It is. And uh, can I we say something? Same about you know, that remind, go ahead. That go ahead. reminded me of um, when Genie Wijnaldum scored against Ter Stegen when we beat them, when we came back and we beat them 4 0, because that kind of went underneath mm -hmm. him as well. I was speaking to my friend who's played goalkeeper, and I'm not trying to make excuses for carries. So... Bro, Drifty, you cut man out like that? Yeah, man, get him out of here. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to make it for Kelleher, but my my friend who plays goalkeeper sometimes was saying that what Kelleher might have done, he's he might have expected the ball to be going further to the corner. So he was he was diving with the intention that it was going to the corner, but obviously because it's gone and because it's not gone to the corner, he's then dived over it almost. Not making an excuse, but I think that's what he was saying. So that's why it reminded me of the Testega moment. But it was a terrible mistake. No, that, no, 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 no. It, it's facts. Let me tell you what people don't try to praise. You see the strike, Cal. It started in line with the post and curved in. So that's what did him in. It was a beautiful strike as well, but he should be doing better. Yeah, but listen, man, I, I think he had a, a stink after getting rasped up in the eye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like you being a striker, Cal, and two minutes in, man, just bruised off your big toe on your preferred <laughs> foot. Bro, you're, you're doing slipping shots yeah. the whole game. <laughs> yeah, you can't put your foot through the ball after that, any. <laughs> you can't, bro. You just can't. Man, just studs off your whole big toe in that, bro. You're done out here. <laughs> yeah. So when I saw that Keller had taken one to the face, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, bro, it's way too early for you to be catching balls to the face. <laughs> 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 But but now nah, in all seriousness, man, I told you, man, we need to sell Robbo and um, Salah in the last window. You man looked at me and chased me out of here. Let me cut my dreads. Talking about shot, you're chatting rubbish, dread. And I'm like, damn, man, these crazy ball heads and that. And, and I mean, I cut my hair. I went away. I meditate. I, I I watch football. I study the game. And I'm like, maybe I'm missing something. And I'm like, nah, man, you man are missing something, you know. And bro, Salah. Drifty, I think there's going to come a time when, you know, my kids and, you know, the other generation is going to ask us like, yo, what's a lot really him? And I feel like there's going to be two answers. There's going to be my answer. And then there's going to be the Salah fanboy answer that told me, yo, look at his number. He was cooking. And only a few real football fans will remember that, yo, Salah will be dead in a game for 60 to 75 minutes. Pop up with a penalty and man talk about look at his GA. Um, the only thing I'm saying is I feel like Nunes can be that guy as well. I feel like moving forward, Nunes can go on to bag multiple goals and man will just erase his first two seasons like they never really happened. It's 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 disgraceful what this guy is doing at our club. I feel like no striker, bad boy or no bad boy, should go to any club as the number nine and cannot be trusted. That That, that is a disgrace. Not trying to beat down the guy in that, but no other club this guy goes to and relax like this. And to be fair, us fans have been backing. How how does that reflect back on us? That is the guy we're backing. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. And the last thing I want to leave you, man, on, I'm not shooting him. I'm just saying context-wise. 
if we don't get any more trophies, I'm blaming Jurgen Klopp. And the reason why I'm blaming Jurgen Klopp is he put way too much pressure on the Mandem to give him a second prem. The Mandem giving him everything from day one, and we've been coming runner up. We've been coming second. And I'm not saying coming second is okay, but the Mandem was given a hundred. Klopp saying he's leaving, bro. It's making the Mandem trying to go to one fifty, bro. We've never been to one fifty, bro. We've never been up there, bro. I'm seeing man losing the ball and walking back. Virgil jogging back, bro. Man is on a break and Virgil is dragging back. Like, yo, what kind of what kind of season is this, bro? Way too much pressure on the man then, bro. Way too much pressure on the man then. Klopp should have just been like, you know what, boys? I was going to do the full thing. I'm going to have to end my contract. He could have just did a preseason goodbye, bro. Man didn't have to drop it in January. Nah, man. It's a cop out, bro. Big, big cop out. I ain't rated it still, but as you men's go in that, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> there come a time you men have to live with that, bro. He's pressuring the men then, bro. Talking about the last dance in that. We weren't even dancing last season. All of a sudden, it's the last dance. <laughs> let me give you, man. Now, let me give you, man, one analogy and jump out. Cal, you don't drink. Respect you for that. How would you feel if I said, yo, Cal, you're at the bar. It's the last call for alcohol. You've never drunk. It can't be your last call, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pop is a dickhead. Dickhead talking about last dance. We weren't even dancing. We weren't even dancing. We're trying to find our foot and learn the two-step this season. Man talk about last dance. It's Endo's first season. It's McAllister's, what, second season eh? First season? Sabazari's first season? How are we going, how are we going last dance? Some man ain't even learned the step yet. Nah, Klopp is a dickhead still. But anyway, big up you, man. Don't push back the show. If you man are nervous, call me, fam. Call me, man. <laughs> Let me no. call me. Let me do the last dance on the Friday, the last dance of the weekend. Let me do up the last dance on the weekend if you men can dance. You know what I'm trying to say? And you see all you friends out there on the social media thing, man. I, I don't know, man. You're, you're reckless, you know, bro. I don't even know, bro. I, I've been nervous the whole nah, time, bro. Nah, Drift, man. Drift, surely. Surely you, man, have been looking over there at Grizz and seeing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man can be kosher. Yeah, man nice. can be suit and tied up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah, you're going to have... You're gonna have to have a disengage button that you push, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll shoot up the place. You know, you know the vibes, man. But just have a disengage button, change the target. I'll traverse. You know what the time it is, man. Cal, big up yourself. Get some orange juice because water ain't working, fam. Drifty. What we saying? We're saying yacht party for clap or no? Well, we ain't, he ain't worth the party. What's up? Yeah, no, right now, bro. No, right now, you know. So, so man's flying back on coach to Germany. So you saying? No, no, he can fly, but I, I don't think anyone's gonna be flying with him at this point. Still, <laughs> now nah, big up you, man, man. Always a pleasure hearing you, man, man. And yeah, keep the show going, man. Big up the man them in the chat and the man them in the calls, man. Yeah, man. Nah, I love it, bro. Good to see you, man. Yeah, oh, it's so ironic. Man. I was just thinking about Zabiri the other day, and then he died because we ain't seen him for a minute, man. Shut, guys, sorry. Anyone, so I think a couple of you are mis, uh, mistaken how Zabiri. So Zabiri calling Klopp that is not him literally saying it. It's it's almost in jest. Like we'll say that to mm. each other as banter. Like he's not saying it like he hates Klopp. So I don't want that to be yeah, yeah, yeah. what Zabiri say. He's saying that tongue in cheek as a joke, saying, How can you leave us like this after one season for McAllister, Endo, and Sabos? Like he's not saying it like that. So please don't try and don't try make it. that the narrative. What I, think I will it's say, difficult. what I will say, if we don't win anything for the rest of the season, I, I will have to look at Klopp as well. Yeah, and that's gonna hurt but again. We're 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 in a we're in a we're in a situation that nobody thought we would be in, and that technically we're not supposed to be in. It's only gonna feel like an underachievement because he's leaving. Because what no, we're doing right now is way above what we thought we would be doing. Shall I tell you why that I don't that doesn't buy as an excuse for me? Because last season we got into Arsenal and Arsenal fans, and they weren't meant to challenge last season. They bottled it, and we rightfully called them out. We might not have meant to have been here, but we're here now. Expectations change. We yeah, but Arsenal eleven points clear, Cal. No, that's, I hear. No, I hear. It, I hear it. No, I'm not saying. I'm, by the way, I'm not saying we'd have bottled it. 
depending on it, let's say we don't win the league and we finish far off one and two, then that is a that is a question of bottling it. Mm. But we still said Arsenal bottled it last season because they didn't win the league and they weren't meant to be in the league. Remember, we went into the season saying Arsenal might never finish top four and they competed for the league. We had ourselves comfortably in top four going into the season. We said third. You said you you think we might challenge, but you didn't say we'd win it. You said we might challenge. Me and Matt said, yeah, third. I thought we'd challenge, but not win it. Yeah, but uh, but objectives and expectations change throughout the season. We pass they those do. The we could go and do it, and if we don't leave with anything else, then we're gonna have to call it up. And unfortunately, boy, it's gonna be tricky. We got we got a couple of super just quickly before we move on as well. Uh, big up hammer every time. Big up ZK. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. He also says shout out Coppish, run up the likes, people. So yeah, make sure yeah. you're hitting the like button, people. So it's a cut, you uh, guys for the members. ZK Hammer's just become a member. Guys, members, members, shout out to Matt, shout out to Drift. To quote Drift, we did have a cook up wire today. So they played FIFA and um they did some cooking. Also um, had a prem prediction show as well for myself. Just going through the weekend's fixtures and doing a prediction. Not even a long video, so check that out. Two videos for our members. So if you're not a member, feel free to jump on, become a member, see what you think of it, and then go from there. Um, another super chat here. Shout out to Sean C, who says, we're so unlucky with the timings of injuries. I'd say we're unlucky with injuries and the timing as well, bro. I've got to be real. Like, we've been desperately unlucky. Desperately, desperately unlucky. Um, yeah. It's, it remains to be seen whether that changes with new backroom staff, etc. But desperately, un, desperately unlucky. Right, let's get the next caller in. Minerals, are you there, bro? Yeah, I'm there, fam. I'm there, boy. You know what I'm saying? Big up. Big up. How you doing, bro? Big hey, up. first time on Coppish, man. I know, Fucking I know. Up, man. Bro, I've been trying for almost three years to come on here, bro. Every time. My left. <laughs> man, fan not here. But man, 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 I was down the pecking all that, man. You find it. You find it. But fam, <laughs> I found, the thing is, I'm more happy, I'm more happy to see, like, Drifty. Because I feel like I feel like he's the he, he is he is the he's like the Teflon of, of this thing because he brings the energy, you know what I'm saying? So appreciate that. Man. So I wanted to talk about you, you, you Liverpool man. <laughs> I've been wanting Liverpool fans. I've been I feel like Liverpool and Klopp. Like I respect like you're winning. Like it's about winning, and nobody cares about uh, being unlucky, right? But, like, I feel like Liverpool have been getting by and uh, you've been going behind a lot in games. Champions don't do that, you know what I mean? Like, you can't keep um, playing basketball, football. I know it's the way you play, but but going behind and conceding all those chances, at some point it has to catch up with you. I felt like that, that Atlanta game, that, that type of result was due because Nunes... Diaz and Salah have been missing the chances, and at times at the back, um, um, you, Allison, Allison would be there to like bail you out. Unfortunately, it did happen today. Do you guys think that yesterday that result was due to happen because of conceding chances and missing the system? Yeah, I've seen that coming from a mile off. I just thought we'd be, I don't want to use the word lucky, I just thought individuals would allow us to get through the season without that happening. But I could see it on the horizon. I just didn't expect it to be yesterday. But, but that me, me. It, it wasn't expected yesterday, but like, but like it was new because you can't keep um, relying on Alison to save everything or yeah. Salah to yeah. uh, go here and there, right? Agreed. Agreed. <coughs> As you said, go, keep on continuing to go behind in games or not taking chances when it's nil-nil. It, yeah, you can't live life like that in football and get away with it too many times. That's what I mean. Like That's what I mean by Liverpool. Liverpool fans have been getting on to me, bro. 
I, 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 I've been telling you, man, about Darwin. Told man, he, he's he, he's kind of robbed. I told man, he will miss it is, and this the and the third. And I also told man about Diaz. He lacks time for the bro. Like like I said, like you you guys you guys um, I feel I feel like um Callum has been so so nice to like Diaz. Like I feel like that that guy that that guy has no end for that man. Like he. I uh, up until he's a good footballer, but he doesn't score the goals, man. He needs to be cooked more, bro. In my opinion. You know what? Sorry. Just for some context, minerals. Who are you supporting? I'm, I'm a greener, bro. You know what I'm saying. Ah. And, I, 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 and and one thing is, I've been watching Drifty since 2018 when he was on like the terrace and. I, I, and that's rant about the carriers. I, 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 that's that's the that's the first one of the three I watched between you guys. Between you guys. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a mad one. Still, that was a mad one. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I say, good day. this is the refined drifty. You lot, you lot, this is drifty back in the day. <laughs> yeah. This is drifty yeah. off no, the win. I had, yeah, I had to adjust my game in it because I would have had a heart attack. Bro. I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> but just, but just, do you agree that Liverpool have been getting by through individual brilliance recently? That's what I feel. To to a degree, yeah. I mean, the thing is as well, bro. Like, I don't know if you've been if you've been realizing, but I think the squad's been under a lot of pressure with all of the injuries and stuff we had, and um. We done well through it, but I think the squad's suffering a little bit now from it. I do. I know people say it's an excuse, but I do think mentally and physically some of the players are a bit drained after all of the tension we went through in that mad period. So yeah, yeah it's a yeah, weird can I, one. Can I say one thing that's going under the radar as well? <clears throat> as great as a manager and as great as a team they are, the reason why I don't think City are going to win the league is because they're actually in the same position at the moment. They're getting through games through individual brilliance, in my opinion, as well. Like De Bruyne, for example, against Crystal Palace. That was individual brilliance. Foden, Real Madrid. Mm. Foden versus Man United. Like, they've been getting through with individual brilliance. It's just that they may have a few more match winners than us, so it doesn't seem as bad. Whereas at the moment... It only really seems as though Salah and McAllister are the match winners we've got at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why it seems. And I, 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 I've been telling, I've, I've been telling Liverpool. I've been, I, I warned Liverpool fans, man. Like some of your fans never learn, bro, because like some of them, some some of them, man, were saying the squad is on. You know what I mean? And um, and Shabos like is on power with Stevie G. I have the receipts. So that's why you find that they don't to up and everything. And Endo is the best thing since sliced bread, but they were slagging him, him off up until November. You know what I mean? And um, uh, and also called Darwin Nunes, Max Suarez as well. You see, that's why that's why I, I don't cook you guys, bro, because you see you see it coming, bro. I I just want to be clear. I have never. Called Sabaz like this the Hungarian Gerard, and I have never compared Nunes to Suarez. Yeah, ne neither have I. That's your fan base, bro. That's, that's your fan base, bro. So no, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Because it, it makes me a little uncomfortable when our fans do that. But minerals, I got uh I gotta be honest, Arsenal fans are very known for doing the same thing, if not worse. Uh. Fair enough, bro. Fair enough. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this league, bro. I'm in this league, bro. Like the amount of things I'll do. Like I think I think, I think I'll get cancelled if we win the league. Oh, uh, we know. Before we let you go, bro, let me just ask you something quickly. How are you feeling from an Arsenal perspective, being that you have the slight advantage? Do you think you're gonna get over the line? Yeah, we definitely can, man. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, we, we, we've been better. We've been better than you guys aesthetically, and we're better. And the metrics are showing it. So we just need to get over the line now. And um, for me, if we beat, if we beat like 
if we win our next three games, we're winning the league. That, that, that's my time frame. That's what I think. Like, if we beat Wolves, Chelsea, and Spurs, I feel like we win it, you know? Because I see yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. more points because, I you, the, the thing of, because you're conceding too many chances and the chickens have been roosting against United and today. You know what I mean? Sorry, yesterday. Sorry. Yeah. Fair deuce. Yeah. Fair deuce. Look, I back you lot to win it from this moment onwards. I do. So it's in your hands, bro. It's in your hands. Bro, you said it last season, bro. Last season, um, that was long. Yeah. yeah, it can't happen again. I tell you that, though. That's the one thing. If it happens again, it's going to be happens mad again. still. Oh, man. I only need another therapy, man. <laughs> I'll be here for it. You lot, if you lot don't win the league, I'm here for it. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I'm, I'm absolutely yeah, here. For it. We, we, we can't allow Man City to win four in a row, bro. Like I rather Liverpool win the league as well because Liverpool are kind of my second team, man. Like they're one of the clubs I don't hate. I appreciate that. I appreciate oh, that. Yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I don't want Arsenal anywhere near the league. <laughs> oh, fair enough, man. Big up, lads, man. First time on the channel. Man. <laughs> Big up, yeah, man. Bro, Big up yourself, bro. This is history that's happened today. Indeed. Yeah, man. Pleasure having you on, bro. Last time, bro. Yeah, come on. Big up, bro. Big up. Big up. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, man. I'm gonna love and leave you. Big up yourself. I see a couple of legends in the back. Rod, big up your damn self, bro. Oh, Joe, bro, big, up. Big, big up, brothers. Um, obviously, I'll try and tune in, but just got a few yeah. things I've got to do now, people. So, cool. obviously, I started with a drifty takeover. Now it's going to end with a cow takeover. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as I said, Cal's members videos out now, people, and the EA FIFA one will be dropping as soon as Cal finishes this dream bang, plus the viewers of you. So you got plenty from us today. Make sure you check out the preview as well for the Crystal Palace game that is already out. So enough, enough, enough love to everyone. Brother, we'll talk, man. Big up yourself, bro. We catch up, man. Cool, man. All right, peeps. In a bit, man. Big up. Right, let's get our next caller in. It's a cow takeover, people. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything too crazy, though. Um, right, let's get it. Let's get it. He's usually last. This time he's not. Man like the Lante in the building. Oh, right, man. Look at that. You there, bro? Me off, caught me off guard here. You. Man was just no, like, no, uh, no, what, no, what, what he's a little bro. man, and now he's trying to sprinkle, man, isn't it? Kyle, you know what it is. You you know in it. You know that's what you smiling, didn't it? You know it. I sent the men round, didn't it? Corey did, didn't it? Yeah, I sent the round, did it? And you thought, you know what, man? I already got drifty in my back, man. After the last night, yeah, yeah, I already got drifty in my. You said, I don't want none of this, isn't it? I mean, I know you. I heard you about a black belt. You know, I got a bit of whoa about you, Kyle. So it's all right. It's cool, man. It's no, cool. I'm definitely, Kyle, you know definitely what? not a black belt. Definitely, I've done a couple. Kyle, of listen, Kyle, listen, mate. Your body's fine. After last night, after that heated moment, man. Listen, mate. I'm a, I'm a bit worried about you now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Boy, that was some, that was some, uh, that's some South man mentality coming out there. You get me? A little bit yeah. of road coming out of you today from you, Kyle. You know what no, I mean? No, I got a shout. I got a shout out to um three people. I got a shout out to Violin. Yeah. I don't even know if he's watching. I got a shout out to um. Pimping the stress, and I got a shout out to um someone called Sylvester, all three people who watch the channel. And I promise you guys, and please hold me to this as well, guys, and I'll do my best. I'm going to try not to lash out people who start saying stuff about the family. It's easier said than done. It is, I promise you, because I'm not cut from that cloth. If I have an issue with someone, the last thing I think to do is disrespect someone's family or friends or relatives. It seems to be something that creeps into this to this um culture on the internet and it winds me up because again no bad man here not not a gangster nothing like that but if someone were to speak badly about my family to my face we've got a big situation to deal with so when people do it on the internet it does wind me up but i'm going to work on myself to try and not to let myself get worked up in front of others about it but it's difficult for me i'm not gonna lie no, hundred percent, Cal. No, honestly, man, I don't. Know. I don't even know who the guy was. I wanted to block. Well, as I'm a mod, yeah, I mean, I'm, but I'm, I'm sure he'd be blocked. If if he says another thing, that's gonna 
he's he's just gonna send me over the edge. So I just thought, nah, yeah. no, I understand that. Go, no, all respect, man, because that's just again, that's just waste man behavior. And unfortunately, yeah, is, like you is. said, unfortunately, you get a lot of trolls like that. And again, I think well, I've had one, you know, one or two. Someone offered me to fight him in the dark alley. I was thinking, what am I gonna <laughs> yes, do? That? That's a Batman <laughs> flex. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what am I gonna go and find you in the dark alley? He's sending me emails and stuff. I was like, <laughs> all right, this fight yeah, in broad daylight. Crazy. He's telling me let's go dark at eleven o'clock at night. I was like, Cow, what the hell is this man shit? Yeah. Find his keepers and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, we move, we move, Cow. We move, we move. We um, do, we do. How you been? Yeah. Sorry to have you, bro. How's the family, bro? How's little man and all? Ah, uh, you know what, Cow. If I'm honest with you, man. To, you know what i know listen Carl. i know you got a lot of messages online in your family man but i'll have to speak to you offline okay cool cool I'll look yeah i'll speak I'll, I'll speak to you offline i know you're busy in that but i'll give you a message and when you yeah, yeah, when you can you, respond bro. then i'll speak to you in detail about it anyway yeah yeah i'm here yeah. Man. okay no i appreciate that Carl. um god I'll flip it out mate where, where do i start this is uh, uh, listen i'm gonna try and keep this short because i know people got a lot of stuff on but Yesterday was just a bottle job mission and I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm still fuming. Actually, I'm fuming. I'm still fuming for the 4-3 defeat against Man United. Yeah, same. I haven't got it. I, I, I'm fuming because I, I just, I just don't know what happened. And it's, and it's repeat against the 2-2, two -two, more drop points. And it's like, we had chances. The squad is there. And yeah, we've got injuries. No excuse. And we're just, these men are waste. They're dead. Drawing yeah. against, you know, Chelsea. And we can't beat them three games in a row. I mean, yeah. personally, Cal, I mean, I mean, like I was, I don't think we deserve to win the league. And it's kind of weird for me to say that, but we don't. We've only got one win and against the top six, and that was Aston Villa. Mm. And we just, I don't know, we are just lose. And I don't want to hear any fans say excuses, games, the tiredness. The squad is good enough, man. If the players are not performing, play the youngsters. They've been doing bits. I mean, yeah. there's no excuse. And, you know. And I said, and it's funny, Cal, because some people in the chat, and that's another thing I want to get to, some of the people in this um, Klopp community. I remember when Klopp first um, made his um, announcement. And for me, it was a bad idea in terms of saying, oh, I'm leaving. I didn't yeah. personally, I didn't like that. Now, nothing against Klopp, but I just thought, and someone said it was going to get leaked, but I don't think that's 100% true. To be honest, I think that could have been well covered. But again, he's putting a lot of stuff in the atmosphere and stuff like that. And a lot of fans, certain fans were saying, oh, are you glad that Klopp's leaving? Which is just stupid because yeah. I'm about Liverpool Football Club. Now, again, all of us are different areas, Cal. You can remember... I'm sure Roy Evans, et cetera, the teams. And like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't even care. It's the cat from my next door neighbor who I don't like, who's managing our club. As yeah. long as they're getting the trophies, we're getting the bag and we're doing heritage on our team. Then that's all I want. That's all I want. I don't care if it's Klopp. And it's just, it's just weird, Cal. Now, correct me if my wrong if you see it. And I see some of it in this chat and on some forums that some of these Liverpool fans are not about the club. They're about the man, Klopp. Yeah. And, it, and it's kind of embarrassing still, and it gets me a bit wound up as well. I can't even lie. So that's my first point. So you can retrain that. Yeah. Um, I've got three other points. I'll try and be as quick as I can. Um, the second point is yesterday's game was just absolute shambles, man. Again, like I, I don't get my weeks gets fuming. Chelsea, May United fans on my case, and I can't even say Jack. <laughs> now, again, <laughs> exactly. Now, again, Cal, again. I get what people look. I've put my hands up. I know like Joey's my guy. That's one of my favorite players, as you know. Yeah. Now I get people saying he was bad. He was bad. He was bad yesterday. Don't get it twisted. But let's keep it a buck. Was he the only one bad? And this is what I hate about our fan base. They like to pick and choose in certain players. Like yeah. Ubu, in my personal opinion, he weren't that great. He was he was that one great that great last yesterday. Or VVD, but we seems to pick, and then we've got some some idiot man in the chat saying, Oh, oh, Joey's been oh, he was just having these just a purple patch player. And, and this is what annoys me, reactionary fans. Like Joey's been one of our best defenders this season. Yeah. That's no cap. Yeah. yeah. That's no cap. But we've got some of our fans saying, Oh, he's a purple patch, sell him. And I'm sorry, you man in the chat that say that you don't understand football, you don't understand the logics of football, you ain't watched the game, you ain't watched our team play. Because if you to say that, Joey, look. Last season, he was dead, but who wasn't dead? You've said yeah. it, Cal. Yeah. And then the, my, third, my, my last two points, the third point is the Trent thing now. Now, all of a sudden, again, all of a sudden, now we're begging Trent and saying, oh, if Trent was here and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Tr listen, Trent's defending has been dead since 2020. I'm sorry, man. He's been dead like The Undertaker retired. You get me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Trent's defense has never been all that. It's been average. And now, and I agree with you, Cal, from yesterday's point. It's just time to leash the boy in midfield. Let's stop yeah. playing games now. Let him go and do what he does in a creative force, not a defensive force, man. We've got Bradley, we've got Gomez, or whoever comes in the right back. You know, that's free. My next point, Cal, is in regards to the next manager. Now, we know Atarim, he's been um, linked with, but I'll give you three choices of managers, right? Go in an ideal scenario. So who would you pick? Would you pick Flick? Would you yeah. pick Nagelsmann? Yeah. Uh, there's another one. Oh, I'm just trying to get, just bear me, Cal, just a second. No problem. Or, or for a wild card, and again, for what he did at Crystal Palace, he, he's, he's a serious, he's going to be a good coach at some point, Patrick Vieira. Ooh. Okay. Okay. And my last point for you, Cal, is I'll just end this as my usual roundup. Who was the better player? Yeah, Mario yeah. Jardel or Luca Tony? And that's it. I'm done. Nalante, you're a legend, bro. Yeah, hit me up and we'll have a chat as well, bro. Yeah, I'll speak to you offline. Yeah, probably yeah, on the bro. weekend or so, anyway. Anytime. Bro. Anytime. Yeah, man. But appreciate sure, it. But big up yourself, Cal, as always, man. And Matt and Drift, man. Keeping the channel running, man. We all appreciate it. And like I said, it's very rare for me to go to channels. And again, I appreciate all the Liverpool content. But obviously, you and 12 Band, who I've you know, been speaking to, he's, he's like big himself up as well. But yeah, man, I'll keep showing the love. I'll keep doing the videos. I'll keep supporting. But yeah, bless it. And big up the chat. I'm out. Big up, bro. Last one. Big up, Nelante. Big up, Nelante. All right, let me help these. So, club or person? I I've had this issue for a while, and I again, I know I'm I'm quite old school. I might not be the oldest person about, but I'm quite old school in my approach to things. And look, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Maybe I need to get with the times, as people say, a little bit more. But you see, like when I see people like dedicating like social media profiles to players or speaking about players before they speak about the team. I, I kid you not, guys. Steven Gerrard is my favourite Liverpool player of all time. But you see, if we had Steven Gerrard and Steven Gerrard was a hindrance to Liverpool Football Club, I'm saying he's got a go or he shouldn't be in the team. Trent is one of my favourite players in the team right now. I don't want to see Trent at right back because I don't think it helps Liverpool. I think he's better in midfield. It's better for him and it's better for the club. So, Bozlai, as God strike me down if I'm lying, before we even got linked with Sir Bozlai in the summer, I did a members video and I said, guys, we are lacking a goal scoring midfielder. So, Bozlai is the guy to go and get. You look at his numbers, you look at what he does on and off the ball. So, Bozlai is the guy to go and get. Lo and behold, we put in a bid for Sir Bozlai, except he's a Liverpool player. I'm ecstatic, Matt's ecstatic because we've been speaking about this player for ages. But I'm telling you right now, on the 12th of April, 2024, I do not want to see Sir Bosley start for Liverpool against Crystal Palace. In fact, if I see Sir Bosley start for Liverpool against Crystal Palace, I feel as though that's a bottle job from Klopp. His form has not been good enough and they're sending a bad message to the rest of the team because you cannot have countless bad performances, make an error like he made last night and still get a guaranteed starting position. It's not a good look for the club. So this club over person stuff, and again, Klopp, I will forever, forever love Klopp. He's given me some of my happiest moments as a Liverpool fan. Maybe he might give me the happiest moments I'll ever have as a Liverpool fan because of where we started with him and where he took us to. But for for, for us to have a conversation about him and, and the first thing people automatically do is say, oh, but you want Klopp out and all this... I've never wanted Klopp to leave Liverpool. Even now, I'll tell you guys, I think maybe the time is right for him to move on, but it hurts like hell he's leaving. It hurts like hell he's leaving. But this is Liverpool. I support Liverpool. I'll always have love for these players and these managers. I still love Rafa Benitez. I wouldn't want him back as Liverpool manager. So I don't I don't get it. I'm with Nilante. That I don't get it. It's always been club over person for me. In terms of Atalanta, again, <laughs> I did a members video on this, but I did it about Gakpo. The energy we have towards some players is not the same energy we have towards others. Now, Nelante was using Gomez as an example, and I agree. 
some of the things that, like Gomez for me has been our our second best defender overall this season, in my opinion. And he, he had a bad game yesterday. No one's going to dispute that. Joe was terrible yesterday. Maybe even the Man United game in the in the FA Cup, he wasn't great as well. But barring that, Gomez has been excellent this season. I think back to the Newcastle game where it went down to 10 men and he came on and he was fantastic. Arsenal, when um when Simicast gets injured and he goes left back and he locks up Saka, almost scores in that game as well. Excellent. He's played DM this season and was very good. Like he's played right back this season, been very good. He's played centre back, been very good. Two bad games I can think of off the top of my head that Gomez has had. And one bad first half against Wolves where Neto was cooking him. Apart from that, I can't think of a bad game or bad moments Joey G's had. But yet people are quick to call it out. But when Kanate has a bad game, Virgil has a bad game, we're, we're, we're stepping on eggshells. But I've said it. I'm not even Gapo's biggest fan. If Gapo has a bad game, I see it in the chat. I see it on the internet. And I'm like, wow, he's... The poor guy is really getting it. And I'm I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't even rate Gakpo like that. But the same people saying that about Gakpo will see Nunes have a bad game and will just brush it under the carpet. They'll see Salah have a bad game. They'll brush it under the carpet. And I'm like, why don't we have that same energy for everyone? Because if we're Liverpool fans, then we're meant to have that same energy for all the fans, for all the players, right? So again... I don't know. So I'm again I'm with Nalante on that one as well. Right. Trent for me has to come back into the team. Has to. But he has to come into midfield. And for me, this is the perfect time. So Bosley hasn't nailed down right center midfield. Jones isn't fully match fit. And for whatever reason, Klopp doesn't trust Harvey Elliott from the beginning of the games. That right center midfield spot is right there for Trent. He's basically playing it when he plays the inverted system. But with you playing him there from the start and having Bradley or Gomez behind him means you've got an insurance policy. Means he can have even more freedom and still be fine because we've got Ibu and then we'll have one of the right backs there as well. So that's another thing. Manager-wise, out of the options given Flick, Nagelsmann and Vieira, I'm going Hansi Flick. I say this, Nagelsmann I think has got a bright future in the game. He cannot be doing the chatty patty stuff, though. His missus cannot be leaking stuff that's happening in the dressing room to newspapers and, and, and social media outlets. That is crazy. It can't be happening. And Vieira, I think Vieira needs to go somewhere and get some more experience. But I think what he was showing at Palace was showing a manager who's starting to come into his own. And I think it's very unfortunate that Palace sacked him when they did especially given the context around the lack of spending power he had and the amount of injuries he had and the fact that the fans were backing him as well. So, yeah, that's that's my stance on that. And out of Jardel and Luca Tony, I'm going to be honest, I didn't watch loads of Jardel. I've only seen highlights mainly. So I'm going to go Luca Tony by default. Luca Tony was a very good striker. Not amazing, in my opinion, but a very good striker. But from what I've seen of Jardel, he was very good as well. So again, Nalante has some fantastic questions. So big up Nalante. Let's get our next caller in. Marcel, you there, brother? Oh. Marcel, you there, bro? Yeah, I'm here, bro. I've been waiting. Damn, yeah. I've been waiting for a minute. I'm finally on. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Oh, on, bro. bro. I was actually eating some jerk chicken, bro. <laughs> I was listening to every single caller. I'm like, damn. I don't know when my time going to come, but I'm just chilling. Because <laughs> you know, you know what the funny thing is, bro. This is my second, this is my second time on here, right? Yeah, I know. And and like, yeah, the last time was you. I think it was you and Matt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the funny thing is, bro, I, I'm never free when you have a calling show, right? Never. But coincidentally, I'm free after a loss. <laughs> and we going through yeah. a bad run of form, just like last season when we was in the dumps, down in the dumps, bro. So Bad run of form, I was free to call in. So it's like, damn, bro, why am I always free when we fucking just lost? My bad to swear. Sorry, my bad. That's all right. You're all you know right, you're all right. So I'm like, damn, bro. I just, I just, it just clocked up in my head. But I'm like, last time I was on the show, we lost. And I, I came on it. again now, and we lost. Like, damn. But hopefully, third time's a charm. And I the hope. next time I'm on is after a W. You feel Fact. me? But yo, big cow, big up. 
and big up the whole team copy, big up Drift. I know I just missed him. Yeah. Um, big up Matt, wherever he's at. Shout out to him, bro. I respect what y'all do, you know. Thank you, man. I might not agree with everything y'all say, but like but that's the, the way it should be, though. That's the way it right. should be. Exactly. But the most the unique thing about this channel and you guys is, and this is why this is my favorite channel, is like it's three of you guys, and it's like different perspectives. Mm. You know what I mean? So like I might agree with like on a certain stream, I might agree with something you said, and then I might disagree with something Drift said. And then on a mm. different stream, it might be, you know what I'm saying? Vice yeah. versa. So that's what it is, bro. And like, like I told you on the last stream, like there's not many Liverpool channels I really gravitate towards, bro. I'm just mm -hmm. going to be honest with you, bro. I've been following this channel for like two years, bro. And it's like, it's legit, bro. It's just Preach. authentic, you know? I didn't come on to really talk about like a specific thing because like, honestly, bro, I'm still hurting from that loss, bro. <laughs> <Same>. I'm <laughs> legit hurting from that loss, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, I feel like I had to call in because like, it's like, it's like a therapy. You should name the stream like Liverpool Therapy or something like that, bro. Because like, <laughs> it's like a therapy session, therapy channel right now, bro. Like, you feel me? But like, I just want to say, bro, like, just just keep your head up, bro. Like, right now, you see me smiling, bro. I'm in pain, bro. I'm hurting, yeah. bro. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I'm smiling through the pain, bro. Because, like, I hate losing, bro. Yeah. I hate losing. I seen so many L's last season. It was down in the dumps, bro. Like, it was bad last season, bro. I don't got to explain to you how bad it was. You was there, bro. You seen it. But I'm like, bro, we haven't take, took, like, that many L's this season. But I'm like, bro, yeah. that loss yesterday at home. It, bro, it like it was like a punch to the gut, bro. Like a prime Mike Tyson punch to the gut, yeah, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like one of them ones, bro. And I was like, damn, bro. Like, cause for me, bro, it's hard to get over a Liverpool loss, bro. Hmm. Honestly, for me, it's hard, bro. And like, ever since I started supporting Liverpool, like for me, bro, I feel like I signed a contract, bro. And I feel like most of my life, like I dedicated like most of my life to like Liverpool, bro. I don't know if, like, I went wrong doing that, but I don't care, No, bro. you didn't. You didn't go wrong. I don't care, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, because, like, it affects me so much, bro. Like, the highs and the lows, bro. The highs and the lows. But, like, the, the lows, like, the losses just really affect me for, like, days. Like, it makes me want, like, want us to play a game again tomorrow, bro. Like, after yesterday, I wish we was playing today. To right, the, to right the wrongs, bro. And just, you know what I'm saying? Just get back to winning ways, bro. Because I hate that feeling of losing. Yeah. You know, I didn't sleep last night at all, bro. Like, I did not sleep. You know, yesterday while I was watching the game, it's a good thing I was watching the game by myself. Because, like, after that final whistle went, I swear, bro, if anybody was around me and they said the wrong thing to me, bro, <laughs> it would have probably went left. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. that was a sign right there. Like, God did that right there. Make sure yeah. I wasn't watching the game with no one yesterday. Because I probably would have said the wrong thing and I would have probably regretted it. Because I was, bro, my head was hot. Yeah. I was like, gone. I had to go outside, take a walk, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> you know, I live in Florida. So, like, it's not like it's cold or whatever. So, like, yeah. I could go outside or whatever. You know what I'm saying? With my T-shirt, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I walked around the block and I'm like, damn, I can't believe we just got embarrassed like that at home. Facts. That was an absolute disgrace, bro. That That one hurt me to the core, bro. But, like. Yo, I just hope he could just bounce back, bro, like this weekend, you know, against Palace and at least keep a clean sheet. This game this weekend, I'm predicting this is where we're going to get a clean sheet. I'm predicting a 2 0 win to get a clean sheet. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't see a clean sheet in any other game but tomorrow. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> something got to give. It has to be tomorrow, bro. Like, yeah. look at the fixtures, bro. Tell me if we can't get a clean sheet tomorrow at home against Palace. If we can't get it tomorrow, when are we going to get it? Yeah, facts. When, bro? We I can't remember the last game we kept a clean sheet. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just, I just hope we could get that win, bro, and just get back on the right track, bro. All is not lost, bro. It's, it's, season's not over. You know what I'm saying? I'm usually an optimistic person, bro. I'm a glass half full type person. And yeah. I know Drift is usually an optimistic person. But earlier, I watched a preview with him and Matt for the Palace game, right? Yeah. And drift predict the last. I'm like, oh, against Palace, bro. did he? Yeah, bro, you didn't watch it. No, I've not watched it yet. He predict the two. Even Matt was like, I can't believe, bro. I'm like, 
I watch this stream to think like, all right, at least I might get a little bit of, you know, encouragement and like yeah. upliftment from these guys. I'm like, drift predict the loss. I'm like, bro, that made me feel worse. I'm like, oh my, what if we do lose? That's going to make it even worse. Oh. I couldn't believe Drift said 2-1 loss at home to Palace. I'm like, bro, if we lose that game, bro, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, bro. Honestly, bro. We can, we I'm, can't I'm, not gonna be, I'm not going to be a nice person to be around if we lose that game. Bro, me neither. Trust me, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna watch that game by myself again. I'm gonna make sure <laughs> there's no one around Sunday morning, it's 9 a.m. my time, no one's around me. I'm watching a game in my bedroom. Leave me, let me be. When Liverpool win, if they most like I'm gonna speak it into existence. We're gonna win. Yeah, we win that game. We'll have a good Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Smiles back on our face, positively, good spirits again, bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, I was I was kind of surprised. I'm like, damn, drift. If 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 drift predict the loss, you must know like it's really like damn. We it's we getting got, to. Yeah, I'm like, bro, like we we in the dumps that bad. I mean, like we're not really down in dumps like last season, but like, shit, bro. Like it look it's looking spooky if drift predict yeah, the yeah. loss at home. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> like, bro, honestly, I watch all you guys streams, previews, everything, every single thing, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Everything. I don't miss like a stream. If I do miss it, I watch it on playback and I watch it from start to finish. That's how Appreciate much of a fan I am of you guys. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate Certain it, times man. I might not agree, but like in the comments, I might not type. I might not type it in the comments. Say, oh, I, I disagree or agree, but I might just say it, mumble it to myself. I'm like, mm, I don't really. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. I'm active in the comments most of the time. So no, no, we see you, bro. We see. You. Yeah, I'll be active down there, like doing the watch alongs or probably doing like a Monday night live show or whatever. You know, yeah. I try to tune in, but like usually on the call-ins for the like Friday nights, I'm never like hardly ever like available. But you know, I'm glad I was available calling on this one, bro. Same. And, you know, just say I don't really want to go into the old club thing, bro, and nothing real specific. But I just yeah. hope we get it together, bro, and just bounce back. That's that's what I'm hoping for, bro. Honestly, fact. Fact. you know. I hope so too. But I got one question before I go. I don't really want to keep um hold you up for that's too good. long. Um. If you had a choice to renew one contract at the end of the season, right? Between Verge and Mo, who would it be if you had to pick one? So that that's what I'm gonna leave you. With. That's the question right there, my brother. Bro, you're gonna really put me on blast like this, yeah? That, that's it, bro. That's bro. It's been on my mind. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask them that one question. This is one of the hardest questions I'll ever have to answer. What they say, you know, it's. I mean, it's a tough one for me too, but I know who I'll choose. I'll, I'll probably have to renew Verge, bro. As much as I love Mo, bro, but if I had the choice to do both, of course, definitely. But yeah, yeah. Um, if if somebody had a gun to my head and say you only get one choice, it probably have to be Verge, bro. You know, but yeah, bro. Well, big up though. And, nah, big up to you, you bro. Know, Health, you, strength, it, and everything, bro. And Bless up you, the Reds. Bro. Definitely, big up Marcel, bro. All right, my G. Take it easy. Oh, this is a hard one for me. Um, oh, this is a bloody difficult one. If I had to renew one of the contracts, I'm going to go and say Virgil for the simple fact that I think it would be slightly easier to replace Salah's output as opposed to getting someone as good as Virgil. And I think people I think people are saying Virgil very quick and it's, it's very difficult to find a seller replacement who's going to replicate what he can do. You're going to have to find a couple of players to do it. But I don't think there's a center back out there that we can get that can remotely come close to Virgil right now. So that's why I'm going to go Virgil. Obviously, in an ideal world, it's, it's it's both, it's both players. But big up Marcel, great question. Even though it put me in the mud, um, but not big up Marcel. Stand telegram, there's so oh. many. Joe, Joe, gonna bring you on, Joe, bro. <laughs> I don't. I'm guess. I'm hoping that was a TV, bro, because you did not sound happy. Um, but yeah, if it is a TV, Joe, then um, if you could just mute that for me, please, bro, so you don't get copyrighted. Right, Joe, I'm gonna bring you on now, bro. Yep. Okay. okay, I'll give Joe a couple minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hasn't been on for a while. He's got his own channel, so my 
people, please make sure you subscribe to his channel, Uncle Rods in the building. Bah, 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 bah. You say, God. <laughs> what I you say? Well, I'm nice, you know. You know, listen, I've been working hard on this thing, you know. My channel. No, I have. I do. Do you know what? Good, good. What is you? You hit 3K recently, right? Yeah, but it's got to three, three thousand one hundred and forty-four now. You love it because you know what it, it is. I, I did this video, right? I did this video because um, what's it? I reacted to this video. Danny Mills was talking some talking some things about Liverpool. I mean, yeah. I disrespect Liverpool, you know. Dis you know, when I, my man, I disrespect bad man, you know. Yeah. I disrespect, <laughs> yeah. He's probably, even, all right, even the sort of like the presenter on Talk Sport, I'd say to him, yo, brother, you're doing a bit too much. Yeah. So I did a reaction on that, and that, that, one, that one shot up still, so I've working out. But you know what? I face some bad minded people still, you know. Yeah, it happens. Right? And some of the people I face that they, right, is people that you know. But I'll talk oh, to you one away about that. I'll yeah, call yeah, speak to I'll call life. you and I'll talk to yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a so, shot. You know what I mean? Because it's, you know, I don't really want to hear a man on your platform yeah, yeah. and thing there. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here what happened now. Here what happened now. You see Salah. You see Salah. Yeah. People, people might think I'm crazy and I think that. But if they want to sell Salah this season, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. I find Salah and they selfish sometimes. Very yeah. selfish. And he doesn't do... Right. He's a person that can meet my bread and talk about it. My bread and fuzzy. Uh, it's one Somali you that's got another channel, yeah? That's doing very well. You know what I mean? And, okay. Big up fuzzy. Yeah. And he's a, he's one of the nicest guys you can ever meet. Trust me, Carl. One of the nicest guys you ever meet. He watches your shows regular. You know what I mean? Big him up, man. Yeah. He's, um, fuzzy. got a channel called... LRFC um, forever, that channel there still. He's a really lovely guy. I'm a brother that, you know. I'm a brother that still. Yeah. Anyway, me and him are chats that regularly. And like, what it is in day, he says to me, which is true, he's not about individuals, he's about the team. Yeah. What's good for the team. And what it is with Salah and Day, right? What I've noticed with Salah the last couple of years that in day is about himself, what he can do. You know what mm. I mean? What records he can break? Do you understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. When you had, all right, when you had something like Marnie at the end of the day, right? And that's something like Marnie. Marnie was about the team. Because you check it mm. now. Check this with Marnie now, right? When they bought him from South, Southampton, where did he play? On the Marley. right. Mm. On the right, wasn't it? It was on the right, and he was doing bits, yeah? Right? Yeah. When Salah come in, they said, oh, you've got to move to the left. Yeah. Fair enough. I moved to the left. Move to the left. Still doing bits, yeah? yeah. Still doing bits, yeah, for the team. One particular game that I think about that always comes to mind is the Champions League final when Salah got injured. Yeah, Real Madrid. And he, yeah, Real Madrid. And he galvanised the team, didn't he? He said, look, yeah. like, he, he was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's, let's get it. This, man. Let's get this thing, you know what I mean? And he scored, and he almost scored again, didn't he? Do you know what I mean? He almost scored yeah. again. Yeah, he got so, to hit the post. He set up Lovren's goal as well. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, so you, then they when Luis Diaz come in, then they, right, he said, all right, then no problem, I'll move to the middle. And, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He's still doing bits. All right, may not be as prolific as he was on the right and left, but he's still doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You kind of ask Salah to move to the left in the centre because he's not going to do anything. He, he's not really mm -hmm. going to do things. Because we've seen him go through the middle all the day, right? And he doesn't really cook as much as he would do if he's on the right. Do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Agreed. Prime example at the day of his self and the day, playing Man United, yeah, this season at Anfield. And I said yeah. this before, yeah, playing Man United at um, Anfield, right, to, sh to Shimakas, Shimakas, right, was in a beautiful position. Pause. Pause. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. big pause. Big pause. Yeah. Well, like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> After he's shaking his son, <laughs> big pause, big pause. You know, no, no. <laughs> but he, was, he was right there. You yeah. can be right there. All Salah had to do is one simple pass, and that ball's in the back of the net. Because yeah. all the old Tichimikas had is a tap in, and they he chose not to do that. And he told to shoot, scuffed his shot. The guy, the guy saves it. 
And that was the last chance we had at the day to actually sort of like win the game. And they nearly won the game. Remember, they nearly won the yeah. game. It was a yeah, count yeah. back in the day. And he got, um, Rashford got stopped. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Do you know what I mean? And he's done that a few times over the over the over the years. He has done that, right? Missed chances at the day. The the type of energy that we gave the, the fan base gave Marnie at the end of the day. I spoke about this before. The type of energy that gave Marnie when Marnie missed a shot, when Marnie used to moan when he come off the pitch, and stuff like that. The type of yeah. energy that Marnie got was unfair. You know this is unfair. Yeah. Like yeah. Salah does the same thing, and nobody says anything. Yeah. Nobody says a damn thing. The other day in the fit night, right, um, Salah got subbed against, I can't remember who it was, you know, it was a couple of games ago. Yeah, and he got subbed in it day. Yeah. Oh, um, was it Sheffield? Yes, Sheffield United. Yeah. It wasn't it. Because he was yeah. doing nothing. He was doing nothing. Yeah. And he got subbed in the, he got subbed in the fit night. Do you see his attitude at the day, right, when he comes to pitch? Yeah, it's, he was it's screwing in every night. He's like, said, Big man, I can sub me off in the very. I don't get sub. One of them things there. When Marnie does that, the whole fan base came for him. There's a guy at the day does this channel in the day, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna gas him out like that on, on your yeah. channel, yeah. But there's a yeah. guy that does, does um, does a uh, football channel, Liverpool one, one Irish dude, yeah, right. When Marnie missed it one time in the day, Marnie missed his shot. And he went for him. He mm. went for him in a big way. And mind you, Mane was doing that type of thing. Um, Salah was doing that type of thing again and again. And then they, I still don't yeah. that today. And nobody said anything. Yeah. When you yeah. look at right, when you look at the when you look at the the the, the game a day against sort of like um, certain games that we played in the day, right? I always say we haven't got enough killers in the squad. Right. Luis Diaz is not a killer. Yeah. yeah? He works hard, no end product. Yeah. Darwin Nunes at the day misses too many chances. Yeah. Don't know what I mean? Not a killer. Salah at the day, right? He's basically at the day but about his about his own self at the day. Because you check it now, against that Man United game that we draw two two, if he didn't score that penalty, he'd have been anonymous. You wouldn't have known he's on the pitch. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah? Right? Not enough killers in the squad. Look at yesterday. Do we the only way I can give Klopp some smoke and everything that, right? Because I do solemn believe it in days like, look, you train your team, yeah? You train mm. the team, train the best tactics in the day. But you know what? When they cross that white line, you're on your own. Yeah. You are, you're on your own. Now, yesterday, I know what you're saying on your show yesterday, because I watched your show yesterday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And very, yeah. very, it was very interesting and a lot of information there, especially coming from yourself. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I know what you say about the free fire two, the extra man and this and that, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. But what I'm saying is this. It's not as if we ain't come up against a team like that before. Yeah? And yeah. one. And one, you know. And one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So last night, and day, was not really any excuse. Do you know what I mean? And I feel it in the day, a number of those players that went on the pitch yesterday and then they let Klopp down. They let him yeah. down. Agreed. They let him down in a big way. And a lot of those players that they need to take a hard look at themselves. And if I was them in there, I'll be giving Klopp half my wages. Mm. Seriously, I'll be giving Klopp my wages because they let him down in a big way. Salah, when he come on in the day, right, did nothing. Yeah? Right? Mm. Like, Sabozlai, you're right what you're saying about Sabozlai. Sabozlai should not start. Should've. He should not start. Because you know something, if it, this is the thing now. This is the only way, way, way I'll give Klopp a bit of smoke here. Yeah? Because what it is in the day, Look at what Darwin Nunes did in, in Man, um, against Man United. Yeah, he passed yeah. inside, and if now they got the ball, a goal. Yeah, yeah. Onza and if that did the same kind of pass um, against Man United the other day. Yeah, yeah. Same kind of pass the other day, passed inside, and if now passed inside, it was a goal. So yeah. Bosley does the same thing yesterday. Haven't we not learned from the one before? Yeah, from the yeah. first one. So Bosley's not like, and the things about it. So Bozzola is supposed to be this dynamic, brilliant midfielder and everything like that. And that was a schoolboy era. So really yeah. in truly and day, I'm expecting I'm expecting Klopp and Day to hook certain players. To say, look, you know, he should have said to Kwanzaa, no disrespect to Kwanzaa. He should have said to Kwanzaa, look, I'm hooking you off and I'm bringing on Kanati. Not it's not to, nothing to do with you. It's just the fact that they, I need somebody with more experience yeah. in this game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
and you're lacking experience. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll put you in another game. You know, like that. Diaz, um, not Diaz, um, Darwin Nunes is the same. Nunes, you're not scoring, right? I need people that's going to score. I'm going to have to bench you. Yeah. Until you can start scoring. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Bench you. So, Boz Light and Day, I hope at the end of the day that so Boz Light don't start and if it not, because he's been poor this last couple of games. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope he don't start. That's what I'm, that's the only smoke I can give sort of like Klopp, that he's not brave enough sometimes with yeah. certain players and to say, well, look, you know what, big man, you're going to have to sit out. You're going to have to sit out. Other than that, and I think, I think the players yesterday let him down. And that's not the first game this season and day they've let down Klopp. They yeah. let down a couple against Man United at the day when we draw a nil nil. They let down a couple again again when we lost against um Man United. And they let him down yesterday because you know what? Yeah, um let him down the other game against Man United, yeah. We were playing them three times. And one of the things about Comey Maynard and the thing that right, if you notice that then when Comey Maynard scored that goal, nobody came out to him. Yeah. Nobody came out, to, nobody came out to him and closed him down, cut off the angle or anything like that. You know what I mean? They came out of him to the last minute when he's already curled it around. It made him look like he's some, he's like, what, Ronaldinho or something like that? Yeah, too passive. Yeah, it? Kobe Mania, you know? Yeah, Kobe too Mania, so. yeah. yeah, and he's a good young baller, but he should never have that sort of space. I don't care who it is. Like, no even if it's an average football, you never give that sort of space in the no, game. No, Can I Can yeah. I say a few things, Uncle? Sorry, sorry, brother. The Salah stuff, I hear what you're saying. And even though I don't want him to get sold, I understand why people will say it because he looks like he's not the same player he was from a year or two ago. The only thing I'll say though, uncle, the issue I have with selling Salah before your likes of Gakpo, Diaz and, and Nunes is I don't trust the others as much as I trust them. And I get it. Salah is selfish sometimes and it frustrates me. You'll see it in games sometimes where he, he mm. goes into business for himself. But what I think goes under the radar, if I'm going to be honest, is the amount of times he's put shots on and put chance on a plate for Diaz, Nunes, and, and not, yeah. not, I wouldn't even say Gakpo, Diaz and Nunes mainly, and them man don't finish their dinner. So not even yet. though he has his selfish moments, he's still our top assist maker, he's still our top chance creator, I think, this season, maybe last as well. Mm. It's the fact the other two aren't finishing their dinner as well. And I think that leads into the night because really and truly, Salah should be on like another eight assists this season, in theory. And that's not even saying that's accounting for all the chances. Like I'm just saying a round number where yeah, obviously yeah. not every chance you're going to convert. Yeah, sure. But at the same time, I look at Salah and I think, does this team need a change as well? If I'm going to be objective and take my Salah, Salah bias, out, I think, does this team need a refresh in the way that we play so direct because one thing I will say about Salah, he doesn't care for the ball like he used he used to. No, like he's very erratic sometimes with the yeah. ball and everything's a hundred miles an hour. And I, I think football's changing it. Everything can't be a hundred miles an hour now. You've got to know when to slow down the play and speed up. But I will still say he's our best attacker, even at his age now, even when he has the selfish moments, even when he does all, he's still our best attacker. Like if this was a Salah declining in a team where you still had a top-class Mane, a top-class Bobby, then I'd be like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Salah can move on. But the problem I have is I can't trust any of the other attackers apart no, from no, Jota. No, definitely, and, definitely. Jota's not, and he's not he's not available enough. No, so you it's know, like no, you're, Salah's you're only right. trust wherever he want. You're, you're right, because that in day, as I said as at the beginning in day, when I look at sort of like um, Luis, Luis Diaz in day, and you know Darwin Nunes at the day. Although Gapo had a good game yesterday, I did. Yeah. I thought he had a good game yesterday. Did, you know yeah. what I mean, right? Although that, you know, what I mean, we look at them two specifically in the day where you think the goal should be coming from. There's no killer instinct. There's literally yeah. no killer instinct with them. I feel at the day, it's people like um, Luis Diaz and people like Darwin Nunes are probably suited to the Spanish game, Portuguese yeah. game, or the Italian game. I think you, you they go over there, they cook. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because it's more slower. I think this. I think the game is too fast for them. Do you know, the game's too fast and it's yeah. too physical. Although I like Nunes, don't get me wrong. I love Nunes and that, and I yeah. want to see Nunes do well in the team. Same with Lucha. I want to see him do well in the team. Do you understand? Know yeah. So, but I, I seriously think it and day right that these this league is a bit too fast 
and physical for them because what it what, what it is at the day is this: Lu, um, Luis Diaz be running running with, running with the ball and we run in at the day right, and as soon as he gets confronted by somebody, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. He'll he, he'll have, he'll have a, you've seen it for yourself. He'll have a stop, pass back, or stop and try and run into the centre. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's a bit too robust and a bit too fast for him. Do you know what I mean? Do you understand what I'm getting yeah. at? But like, yeah, yeah. I feel it, I honestly feel it in the day, right, is this, in the day, right, is that they made a mistake at the day, right, in putting all the eggs in one basket with Salah. They should have they should have offered at the day um, Marnie and they, some sort of an a, a improved deal. Some sort of proved it because they I'm did, not, they did, you know, uncle. He just wanted to go back to, he just wanted yeah, to go well, buy him. Do you know what it is at the day, right? I hear that. Can I hear that? Do you know what I mean? Mm. But obviously, it was that, not, not that act much of an approved deal. Let's get the words out in a minute. Not that I'm much of an approved deal at the day to keep to um, make him stay because you know what it is, right? And I'll talk to you one away about this year, right? Mm. What it was at the day, right? Marnie saw at the day. Don't get make a mistake. Don't make a mistake, you know. Marley saw the favoritism that was shown towards Salah, because many of people saw it. There was favoritism shown towards Salah than what there was in Marley. Do you, know, do you understand what I'm saying? And Marley's yeah. probably thinking, and they, I've worked damn hard for the team. I've gone from position to position to position, and they don't need to pause on that one because no, of course, that's yeah. all right. That was, yeah, that, yeah. that was good. That was that's good. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. good. That one gone, can pass. That one can pass. Yeah, you know what I mean. That one. But he's yeah. gone from position to position, and they and done his thing, and they right, and he hasn't really got no thanks for it. There was no thanks for it when mm. when sort of like Salah threw through his toes, toes at the pram. No matter how it come about, whether it's his agent or whether it was him. When he could throw these toys at the Pam and the Fram, everybody was like, yeah, you know what? We've got to make Salah happy. It wasn't about what making Mane happy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he saw he saw the play from earlier. And he thinks, so, well, you know what, brother? We're going, we're going to Germany. Because remember the day, even when he went to Germany and the Fram, remember he left there, you know? Yeah. He left Germany and went to Saudi. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it wasn't a certain day that, uh, that was his dream moving and worked out. He just wanted to get out of Liverpool. Because he saw what was going on, and I don't, I don't blame him. I don't think I, I, I think he's. I think it was a dream for him to play for Bayern. I just think that dream went up in smoke because of how things were behind the scenes there. I actually think if Mane had stayed for one more season, especially with Kane there now, I actually think it could have worked out better for Mane. Oh, you been cooking? He'd have yeah. been cooking. Him and Kane. He might, not, he might not have been a starter, but I think in games where Bayern haven't performed as well. Mane could have come off the bench or he could have rotated with Kane sometimes. I do, I do think Liverpool wanted to keep, especially knowing how Klopp is, I think he wanted to keep yeah, Mane. Klopp, Klopp wanted to keep, Klopp would have, you know what is it isn't they? Klopp, Klopp would have kept all of these players. Though. Yeah, Klopp would have wanted to keep him. I, I, yeah, Klopp wanted to keep him. But it was a hierarchy. Because remember that day, you know, you check it now. When it comes to Gini Wanada, and if that right, Klopp wanted to keep Gini Wanada. Yeah, yeah. It was a hierarchy, and they said, "Now, nah, man, we ain't gonna offer him more money." Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't, yeah. I don't deny it. And day that Klopp wanted to keep, would have wanted to keep him because him because he want Klopp wanted money for when he was in um, Salzburg. When he's with Salzburg, yeah. he wanted money. He wanted money to come to Dortmund. Them times there, you understand what I'm saying? And he couldn't get him. Now he's come to Liverpool. and He had a chance to get him. He got him. Remember, he just got him, and then they, yeah. So I yeah. don't deny it, and then the club will want to keep him. It was a hierarchy, and the hierarchy, and they made, made a mistake as they've been making mistakes after mistakes after mistake. Because what they've done at the end day, right? They put all the eggs in one basket with Salah, and you know something in there, right? It hasn't really worked out for them. Do you know what I mean? In that, in that way, I know he, you know he's assist and all that, right? But the yeah. times at the end day that we, when we could have won a, won games in a fit night, and you know this as well as I do, when we could have won games at the end day. He hasn't turned up and he's been selfish. Do you know what I mean? He's been I all the time. I'll be honest, I think that's more on Nunes. If I if I hate to call out an individual, I think that's more on Nunes and Diaz this season. Well, we know they're not killers, but what I'm trying to say is that they, it's like Salah and the days had his chances. He's had a lot. That, what game was it? I think it was the um our last um one of our last league games. Yeah, it was against Man United. We could have been four. We could have been four yeah, and up. That, yeah, that him and Sabozla did a madness. Yeah, that. yeah, we could have been four and up, and he's done. He's done that thing, um, so many times. As for the league and everything, that right. As for the league, I still think we win the league. I, I do. Still, well. I still think we win the league, and 
I'm gonna be I'm gonna be audacious. No, I'm gonna be audacious. Gonna, gonna bring me back my team to the fullest. You ain't over till it's over, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Ain't that over I, the game's not finished. It's not over yet. You know what? It's a Nate. Um, God, right? No matter with um minerals that day now because that's a I had to run him out my group with his propaganda. You know? <laughs> he came with some propaganda. You know? I had to run him out my group. I said, "Well, go it." <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> no, but, you know what I mean. But like, what it is at day is this: we cannot play no worse than what we did yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It cannot get any worse in the day. And as I said, in the day, one thing in the day, Jot's come back, and you know what Jot did that the last time he went to Atlanta, he put he put three past them, and we like we won five 0 in the end. Yeah. I feel it in day, right? We go to Atalanta next Thursday and we cause a madness. I feel we cause a madness in the day. I feel it in day that Klopp would never would not. As long as he's there, he's in about seven games left and obviously, you know, four games at the day if we, you know, do the chat um Europa Cup. I feel it in day. So as long as I'm here, we're not gonna have that sort of like same performance as we did yesterday. And I yeah. feel it I feel it in day. It can either go two ways in our car. We can win the battle but lose the war. Yeah. yeah. Right? Or we can win the battle and win the war as well. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Do you know what I mean? This and that's what Liverpool does. And that's why I love Liverpool and they because when their backs against the wall and they, right? They, can they always come out and they always come out fighting. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm listen, I'm all about, as you say in effect, I'm all about the club. I'm not all about individuals and they individuals can kiss my grits. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. Do you know what I mean? It's about yeah. the club, and if you're not doing well, well for the club, and you're not helping the club club strive forward, and they you need to go. So I, if right, you know what is in day right? If Luis Diaz and Nunes and they get sold next season and they, I won't be averse to it. If Salah, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Listen, talking to you and if not, I'll have to think it over again. Yeah, I'll yeah. Think it over. You know what I mean? Talking to you in them because there's always yeah. two sides. There's always yeah. two sides to it, and I, and I value your input, Carl. That's why I will talk to you about football. You yeah, feel yeah, me, nah, right? yeah. But what it is, if them two and day right, then them two go next season and for now, I won't. I wouldn't mind in you know, that because I don't think in the day the game, the English game in the day right, is for them. Not taking anything away from them, I just don't think the English game is for them. I think they're more yeah. suited in Spain, Portugal, or Italy. Do you know what I mean? Maybe a Germany as well, but maybe a Germany, but not here. Yeah. And, I, and I feel it and they sort of like Gapo and then to me and they he will get better. Gapo will get better and everything that, right? Because he's just that sort of guy and everything that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Boss Light and Dave needs to take a look himself himself and do I do a lot more better. Do you know what I mean? And needs to be benched. You know what I mean? But you know, with that, listen, Cal, uh-huh. you know. It's, you know, it's always good talking to you, brother. Always love, bro. Always love. I put your channel in the chat. People, make sure you go and head over to Uncle Rosie's channel. Get him up to 4,000 subs. <laughs> Ross, stop that. Yeah, see, Jeff, see. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I was going to say to you before, God, did this just slow jam thing I give you? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> You're trying to get me another baby, bro. <laughs> I was about to say, I, you know what I was about to say? It's one, on, it's one on the way, but I thought that might be a bit too personal. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, they bet not be. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You know, if there is, don't blame me. You know, I'm just, listen, don't kill the messenger, boy. You know what I mean? I just play music, G. You know what I mean? But listen, listen, big up to you. Nah, um, big up you, to you to every member of your family, Stevie and on. And the newborn and stuff. Right. And big up your wife, wife as well. Enough respect to your wife and them things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she's, a, I know she's just a spe- very, very special person. And you can tell her that. I tell her I said that she's a very, very special person. Okay, you man. know what I mean? And um, big up Drifty. I didn't get chance to say hello to him. And big up Matt. And I'm one one suggestion I've got to give you for your show, right? Your yeah. show. What you know? What you should do. You should do a copish vibes corner from that, right? Because sometimes and everything. I'm I'm your I'm listening to the channel and everything that, right? And I forget end of the day is about football. And it, you don't have beer vibes, man. Yeah, I know. One time you one time I, it was I think it was a couple of weeks ago or a month ago or so, right? One time in the day, you had me laughing so much I had a I had a headache. Do you know I had a headache? I, my head was killing me though. I laughed so much. Do, 
we have to might we might have to do something like that but on twitch or rumble because youtube's very hard to like add music and stuff yeah. and so we if we do that we'll let everyone know but we'll probably be on one of the other platforms and so i'm there if you do that i'll be listening to it all the time because you see matt but <laughs> he's a menace i keep on telling he, everyone he's a menace. Listen. Matt's sneaky, you know. Yeah, he's a I know. sneaky guy, you know. Yeah. You know, you see this in the car, that's Tesla in the car, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he'll say something a bit like that, right? Yeah. And he'll just start laughing. And just like, yeah. Matt's a G, you know. Cause, but the thing about it, you look, you two have got so, such a good vibe because you know each other and you work well together. And like, if you did something like that, like a copied vibe call, vibe call, we just talked about everything, obviously, fighting and football. You just talked about anything and you yeah. had your bare jokes. I go, yo. That'll be up there, brother. That'll be up there. But you know what, brother? Keep up the good work. Big up mm -hmm. Matt. Big up Drifty. Big up yourself and your family. And listen, Thank big you. up the whole of copy people in the chat. Do you know what I mean? Listen, this is the best football channel out, man. The best Thank football you. channel out. You ain't gonna get no vibes like this anywhere else, man. Listen, big up to you and love respect. Big up. Bless you, up. One love, man. One love. Nice one, bro. Big up. Big up. Big up, Uncle Rhodes, man. Big up, Uncle Rhodes. Big up. Um, yeah, do you know what? It's something we have been thinking about, but yeah, if uh, guys again, I one platform I don't know very well, like the back, like I know YouTube pretty well because of work and stuff like that. Rumble, I'm starting to get familiar with. If you guys can give me a little bit of information, even if you guys just hit me up in the DM just about Twitch and if we're able to play music over there and show like different visuals and stuff like that, because YouTube are very strict with the copyright and then. Obviously, we've worked so hard to build this channel. We don't want to lose this channel. So if you can, give me a bit of information, guys. And if we can do like a little vibe session and just away from football and just do some fun stuff, then, yeah, let me know. We'll definitely do that. Right, I'm going to I'm gonna welcome someone onto the channel who is literally like, he's like, he he's the reason why I'm able to do stuff on the Sanders show. And I... I'll, I'll draw back the curtain and I'll, I'll break the fourth wall here. Shout out to Jamie Phillips as well. But me and Luke have been doing MMA content for probably about two years now. And I kid you not. So everyone knows i got the three kids and work and all that. UFC, for anyone who watches the stream or doesn't watch the stream, starts at like three in the morning UK time. If it wasn't for Luke Tanner... The amount of shows I'd have missed for through sleeping through these shows, and it's it would be crazy. So I had to give him a proper introduction. Not only that, he's a great Liverpool fan, a great guy, and it's a delight to have him on Coffee. Big up Luke Tanner in the building. How you doing, brother? Long time no see. Long know, time no too see. Too long. Too long. On a personal yeah, it level, been too lovely long. to see you on stream, man. Lovely to see you on the screen. Uh, uh, it's lovely to see. Uh, uh, to see everyone in the chat. Oh, mate. I'm still annoyed from last night, you know. Um, I had to go to work today. I have a United fan, a City fan, a Brian and Spurs fan, all at work. And I sat there in our group chat and I'm thinking, oh, get cooked. Painful, get cooked. And, and I said one line, play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And that was yeah. Liverpool's performance last night was... Uh, to be honest, we have been playing like that most most of the season, mm. but it took a cert like it it was always going to take one team to actually finish us off, and we got yeah. exactly what we deserved. Like I couldn't even come back and say anything because yeah. we got exactly what what we deserved in the game. We got nothing. We could we go to Atalanta and win five nil like we did in the Champions League, possibly, but I can't see it, and. Um, Hey, if I'm those players, I'm not looking at Jurgen Klopp saying sorry to. I'm watching the guy upstairs, Michael Edwards, yeah. and Rich Hughes, because <laughs> yeah. Klopp's going. Because I think I saw a thing today. I think um, someone did a space with that Colombian journalist, and apparently the club want to offer Luis Diaz a new contract. And I'm probably oh. just thinking, if someone's run that past Michael Edwards, because he's probably sitting there and thinking. Ah, right. I'm going to cut some of you this summer. I'm going to be making some money out of some of these players. because Here's the thing. I can understand the club wanting to keep Diaz. But we still need to add to the attack. Like Something has to change with that attack. I don't know what, but something has to change. because it's not. I just have a bad feeling that Edwards is going to is gonna see 
Salah Saudi and take and take the hundred and take the hundred and fifty million, which for me, if it if it was me rejigging that whole attack, I think I think we'd I'd give Salah a new deal, like give him like a year, like a year extra, knowing that you can sell him the year after. Because the thing is with with Salah, he still wants to play Champions League football. And he knows the second he goes to Saudi, that dream's done. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much, because you're basically admitting that I like my my career in Europe is finished the second he goes to Saudi. Um, but the thing is, like, he doesn't go anywhere else apart from Liverpool unless he goes to PSG to replace Mbappe, which I don't think. But for me personally, I think he, I think he actually stays. I think all the three contracts that everyone's worried about, I think they all sign. I hope so. I think you know what? Like, I think it's squad players that get cut. Call me crazy. I wouldn't rule out Real Madrid trying to go in for Salah, you know. I don't know because I think I know they've got. I know, know they the future, but they haven't got loads of experience in that team. And a front three of Vinicius, Mbappe, and Salah, when you'd only have to buy one, and you still have Rodrigo behind them, you have Arda Gula behind that as well. Mm. And then the midfield that they've got, I I would not be surprised if Real Madrid going for Salah. I think I said Sun said that PSG as well. PSG, I can see that because they're going to want to replace Mbappe because Mbappe Real Madrid, you might as well nail that. Well, apparently, um, take the money out. Apparently, but... Oshman's the one that um, PSG won. Yeah, yeah, Oshman's going to replace Mbappe, and then Mbappe is definitely going Madrid. Like, yeah, they're saving, saving Madrid. Don't, don't want to stun Endrick oh, yeah. about Endrick as well. Bloody old Madrid. I slain. think they'll find a way. I think, um, I think it's Rodrigo that could be getting the cut out of there because surely Madrid are going to have to sell someone. But I think I don't think they'll sell think Rodrigo. That, and I don't think he wants to go. I think they'll find a way to keep all, all the players together. But I think for Liverpool, I think momentum such a big thing, and that FA Cup defeat. To, to United last minute absolutely knocked the stuffing out of yeah. of the team and then it went to the international break yeah and then since then we've sort of been getting by dodgy performances we get uh, we get the win but yeah. hey is, is it all right Virgil coming out saying I want a quick start we're gonna put it right let's talk in more action please yeah because fact. you said that last few times and the football's been pretty much the same, slow pace, possession. Yeah. Um, I think yeah, yeah, like I I was watching the game. Um, and I was like, Kelleher, to see why you're second choice, my friend. Yeah, I, I feel so two, two great <laughs> saves, and then the second the ball goes under, I'm like, oh, you should have saved that. And and you should have saved the third one as well. I think you should have made more of an effort. For the yeah. second one, and I just look at him and thinking he needs first team football. Like he can be a number one at a good Premier League club, but yeah. he's done exceptionally well because he's had a run of games. But you can see his level. Yeah, one world class save, two errors. No, I think he made two re- re- really good saves. One or two errors. Distribution was poor, and I think yeah, not, not gonna lie. Like I'm sort of. I'm excited for what what happens post post Same. post clock. Like, Same. Uh, I, I got over the hump that he was leaving within the day. I was a bit down for the day, and after I was like, you "Know what? Yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it because yeah, clock clock clock. Please, please get that Premier League, please. Yeah. But our steam, we're running out of momentum. People were saying this. Throughout the season, Liverpool are going to hit a dip. Um, and we've hit our dip at the business end of the season. Yeah, the worst time. I think City hit the dip before Christmas, before they went to the Club World Cup. Arsenal yeah. had their dip in January. And we've had that dip like, on like on the way down. Like We've had that dip for a little bit. And... Yeah, like we need, like I need a convincing performance more than the three. Yeah, obviously I want the three points, but yeah. the three points combined with a good performance. Agreed. A good performance. 
Like, and some of the players that are coming back, like Jota, we need you. Like Jota, we need you. Trent, we need you. Yeah. Joe Gomez, please stop shooting. Yeah. Please, yeah. I am begging you. Yeah, please, it's getting... you're you are not having that Vincent Company moment. Yeah, where he lashes it in. Please, please Three. stop shooting. And I think Klopp was shouting, saying, "Do not shoot." But yeah, he, he yeah, yeah crazy, that's the but... first time I've seen Klopp really go at someone for shooting long range. Like he really went after Gomez when Gomez did that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, some of some of the players that came on, so so it's a Bosley, it's a seventy million pounds. Yeah. Oh, not looking good, is it? Electric for like electric month or two. Since then, he's just gone like this. Yeah. No, no, really? no, Hungarian Gerard. It's Hungarian Henderson. Yeah. Because I can't tell if that's in like a Hen- Henderson last season. Like literally, that's that's what he's uh, like playing as. But hopefully, new manager comes in. He's gonna r- refresh. Get. Get some new ideas, because I feel like that it has gone a little bit stale tactically. I feel like that. Let me ask you a question. Refresh. Yeah. What would you do at the front? Who would you keep? Let's say, for example, Liverpool, let's say you had 100 mil to spend and then anything you make from player sales. What would you Ooh, do at so, that attack? So I would, oh, it's a difficult one. Because my patience is running out with Nunes. I, w- I would bought the Uruguay and Timo Werner for more money. Um, keep Jota, keep Salah, try to extend him for a little bit more. Um, and then I'd keep Gakpo because he actually was probably the best attacker Yeah. Um, on, on the left. And where, ironically, it was best position. Who knew? Which Cobb admitted that he's been messing him around. Yeah. Season. Cobb admitted it. Which is crazy. But um oh, Diaz, if a good offer came in, like if PSG were like, okay, I will give you 70-80, I'd be like, yeah, cool. Uh Nunes, but the thing I, I would be willing to listen to offers, however, there isn't like uh, uh, the centre forward market is pretty dead. Yeah. So you're thinking to get rid of him, you're looking around Europe. Are you gonna take a punt on Jokerez, who came from Coventry and had one electric season? Are, are you taking a punt on Ossiemen, who's not had a great sec he's not had a great season this season? Would you take a punt on Ivan Tony, even though that he's basically been slagging off Brentford at every single opportunity? <laughs> or or are you gonna let the new manager work his magic? Or attempt to work his magic on, on Nunes, so I think I would be at least getting rid of, of reluctantly get rid of Luis Luis Diaz and have off, offers open for Gakpo and Nunes should decent offers come in because players are going to have to be sold like this summer. I think people are going to need to get rid of Player FC because I have noticed this a lot more. Like even looking on X Twitter. Chats afterwards um, of games, it's incredibly toxic. Oh, yeah. I'm back in my player. You need to scrap that. If some of your favourites, they're going to be going this summer. Yeah. Uh, there, there are some key players that we should be looking at thinking, Robbo, Simakas. I've got my doubts over Kanate. I, I actually prefer yeah, Kwanzaa start. Injuries, right? I know he had that error. I know he had that error against United. And he also had that poor game against Palace where he conceded the penalty, but he's been pretty good this season. Yeah. And that looks the better partnership. That looks the more settled partnership. Van Dijk and Kwanzaa, which, which Drifty did call at the beginning of the season, you know. Drifty yeah. called it. He did. Um, and then and, and then midfield needs, needs a bit of a rejig as well. Definitely, definitely needs a DM, but we're packed with midfielders, so someone someone's going to have to... Someone's going to have to go, but are you going to ship out one of one of your summer signings? I don't think one has to right go. Away. So for me, for attack, I would sell. I would sell Gakpo, and if Diaz wants to leave, like it seems he does, I'd sell Diaz as well. I'd make Nunes a left winger, and it's funny you mentioned Timo Werner 
I see a lot of similarities between Nunes and Timo Werner. Mm. I think if you keep Nunes's game basic and you literally tell him, look, hug touch line, get to the byline and cross the cross the ball in, I think Nunes can yeah. do that. And I think he can get some goals doing that as well. Yeah. In the same way Werner does. You wouldn't say they're traditional left wingers or they're they're explosive left wingers in terms of mm-hmm. dribbling and skill, but they can do a good enough job there to keep a right back working hard for a 90 minutes because I don't trust him as a striker. So I'd play him left wing, and but I'd bring in another left winger like a Musiala in an ideal world. Then a dream for me would be to go and get Isak and have him as a number nine, rotate with Jota and, and Dan's. And then at least uh, say the medical staff, get another bed ready for him. But get another bed ready. That's and the only thing with Isak is it injuries. It is. But if you've got Jota, yeah. Isak, Dan's, and then you can still play Nunes there as fourth uh, choice. Hey, yeah. Have you seen Dan's goal against United? No, I haven't. I heard, I heard it was quality though. Cold. It's a cold finish. I've seen it. It's cold. But yeah, I think I think with Ruben Amarin looking like he's gonna be the guy. Um, yeah, then then I think he'll he'll at least bring probably a couple of players that know his system with him. I'm hoping so, Anasio might be one of them. Him, Diamande. Um, I don't think he'll bring in Jokerez. I think Jokerez may go to like an Arsenal um, yeah, or, or right. somewhere like that. Um, but yeah, need need a midfielder. I wonder if um, Paulinho will end up coming to Liverpool. To link up with uh, his yeah, former that's manager, Aberun as well. I'd be alright, Pelin. Yeah, so it'll so be very interesting. But but it's a shame Drifty and Matt aren't here because I need yeah. those two. Yeah, <laughs> UFC three hundred tomorrow. Indeed, We're talking. I need to make sure that they're there. Yeah, Freeland, for real. one a.m. Real before that, though, we've got a yeah. preview on your channel at midnight. Preview at midnight with obviously myself, you. Jamie, special Big guest. Indeed. Mr. Blue Chip will be joining us Jeez. as well. Man, like Abby. Guys, so, yeah. link is in the chat to Luke's channel. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. We're going to be live on there at 12 a.m. So make sure you're there. That's UK time, 12 a.m. to speak about UFC 300. And then tomorrow night is the big one. Yes, see 300 yeah. watch long prelims and main card on the Sanderson show. Guys, lots to discuss. Lots to discuss. Lots to lots discuss. Hey, thank you everyone in the chat as well. No, Thanks. big it's been a long yourself. time coming. To... Gotta make this more regular, bro. Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Cal, I'll Catch see you, you after you finish this. Yeah, won't be long, bro. <laughs> nice one. Big up Luke Tanner in the building. <laughs> Shout out to Imran. Always on cue. Big up Misha. Um, yeah, Amarin. I forget that he's played with Pelina and and again Ugarte. I know he's not been he's been pulling up trees at PSG. I know he hasn't, guys. So don't get on to me. Alie, I'm with you, bro. Ugarte, Ugarte, Zubamendi, Kone, someone. And that's not me saying I don't trust Bichetic or I don't think Bichetic's that guy. I just don't think he's that guy yet. I would like to see... And if you look here in midfield, we've got three players for each of the positions, apart from DM. We've got two DMs in Endo and Bichetic. Three left centre midfielders for me would be McAllister, Graven Birch and Jones. Three right centre midfielders would be Trent, Sabozlai and Elliot. For me, if you go and get an Ugarte or a Zubamendi or a Kone, we're cooking. Yes, Gangan Deep, I would keep Endo for one season. I really would. I think he's deserved it. I think he's absolutely deserved it. ZK Hammer, I don't see Madrid letting Shuameni go. He's too valuable. Shuameni's too valuable. And he doesn't want to leave Real Madrid. He loves it there. Especially with Mbappe going to join as well. Like He loves it there. Um, KJSJ, everyone who's watched me for a while will know how much I rate Morton. He's just not a DM. He's just not a DM. And it, I'm going to say this, I'm going to caveat it, because I think Graham Birch obviously has a higher ceiling. 
I think Morton could do just as well in our midfield as Graven Birch currently, but I think Graven Birch has a higher ceiling. I know that's not going to go down well because Morton's seen as just this academy guy who's just only played at Hull. There's a very good player inside Tyler Morton. Very good player. And I think if he had been given a chance this season like Connor Bradley, I think he could have done something. I think he could have done something. But Ugarte, if look, if PSG are even considering selling Ugarte, if they are even considering selling Ugarte, go and get him now. Go and get him now. It'd be fantastic. Um, got to hit up some of you guys in the comments as well. Um, big up Beijing Res TV. Go and subscribe to Beijing Res TV. I am by myself, but I'm about to wrap up, bro. So we're all good. Drifty was on with me before, but he had to go. He told me from previously he had to go. That's why. So Drift started the stream because I wasn't able to start that time. And he told me he wouldn't be able to finish it. And then so we we did a, a tagging situation here. I, I took the hot tag and um I did an R Truth and I collected the belt off the ladder. Um so yeah, all good, all good. Um Morton does need a run. Um I think I, saw, I missed a question here. Where was it? Where was it? There it is. Shout out to Gory. Um, Kyle, what right winger would you bring in if Salah leaves? Um, I think we need a right winger in the summer, no matter what. Bro, I think we've needed a right winger since 2020. But if I'm going to... So here's the thing. If Salah leaves, I think we need... Sorry about that, guys. I think if Salah leaves, we need two right wingers. If that's the case... I would go if let's say Salah stays. I would go for Elise. If Salah leaves, I would go for Elise and someone, maybe Bowen. I would try and test the water for Bowen. I don't think we can get Kudus. I would maybe try Bowen though. I'm trying to think who else. Um, Leroy Sane is a fantastic player, but that attitude, man, that attitude for me, I, I'm not a fan. Um, Pedro Neto, everyone knows how highly I rate him. The injuries would be too risky for me, in my opinion. Again, not going to sit here and be upset if we sign Neto, but I could absolutely understand if we didn't sign Neto, um, because of the injury situation. Florian works his quality, but I wouldn't say he's a right winger. Um, Absolutely quality. And Buomo's good. Um, I just don't think he's better than the others. Um, shout out to Pinto. What do I think of Gakura? Uh, quality. He looks really good. He's his first season. So, again, I don't want to say, yeah, he's that guy. He does look really good, though. Musa Diaby is another one, guys. It Look, he's the one, in my opinion, we should have signed last summer. I still don't understand for the life of me why we didn't. I know people were saying we've got Ben Doak and all that, but it, it was crazy that we were comparing Ben Doak to Musa Diaby. Uh, Johan Bakayoko, shout out to Ali, is another one. Um, Kubo from Real Sociedad, another player. Uh, Xerxes, a good shout as well, LK. Um, Bradley Baco Bacola. It's weird. Every time someone says Bradley Bacola, uh, Bacola, sorry, the first person I think of is John II because he was the first person who spoke about him to us. And he does look a player. He looked really lively when he played against um, Barcelona the other day. Um, Yamal from Barca is going to be impossible to get, although he looks like he could be the next big thing. Um, TK, what about Marcus Edwards? Maybe, maybe. He does look lively, does look good. Um, I still wouldn't go for Marcus. For me, the four that really stand out is Elise. Kobu, Diaby, and Neto. Those are the four that really stand out, who I think we could potentially get. We could. We could. But then again, we might be scouting already and, and we might go and get someone we don't even know of. Let's let's be real. People like uh, Kaver and Kim, who was at Napoli before they went on to win, like, 
the the Scudetto. No one knew them. No one knew them. So look how good they they become. But I definitely think we need to refresh. And I think we need to be ruthless. As I said, I'm keeping Nunes, but I'm playing him as a left winger if Diaz is sold. If Diaz is not sold and Diaz stays and wants to stay, then I would sell Nunes and Gakpo. But either way, for me, two players at that front three out of that front five have to be sold. Musiala would be amazing, in my opinion, to play on the left. Elise would be amazing to, to rotate with Salah on the right. And then a striker to come in ahead of um or to rotate with Jota. Centre back, I still think we need two centre backs as well. I think we needed a centre back before we lost Matip. We're losing Matip in the summer. I think we need two centre backs. Or we need two defenders, I'll say. Because if if we need a centre back, we need at least one centre back, in my opinion. If Joe Gomez is going to be played as a centre back, then I think we need another right back. If Joe Gomez is going to be played as a full back, then I think we need another centre back. And I think we need one more DM. One more DM. And if Robbo or Simakas is to be moved on, then we need a left back as well. So I do think we've got a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done in the summer. I think at least four players have to come in in the summer. Left back, the only reason I'm, I'm not saying like left back has to be sorted now is because of how much work we have to do on the other positions, i.e. centre-back, DM and, and attack. But I, I do think left back has to be looked at. I wouldn't even mind if left back was looked at in a January, but something has to be done there. Um, right, let me help these supers. Um, Zabiri says, yeah, man, Klopp sold us out. Should have hold, held the news. That's when Nelante was speaking about it. I... I see it from both sides. I can understand why he said it now, but I also would have understood if he kept the news to himself as well. Um, shout out to Pete Al says, who do you think is better, Bichetic or Mainu? Um Recency bias will say Mainu, but that time where Bichetic came into the team and, and actually was carrying the midfield, he was excellent. So, P, I'm going to sit on the fence, bro, not to disrespect you. I'm going to sit on the fence and I'm going to wait before I give the answer because last season it wouldn't even have been close. And because we haven't seen Bechetic, it's difficult to say. But Maynou does look like a player. I can't even do the whole I hate Man United stuff and Maynou looks like a player. I, and his demeanour, I, I like the look of his demeanour as well. He seems like a level-headed guy who's got his head screwed on and is about football. And if that is the case... I hope he surrounds himself with the right people and I hope he goes on to have a good career. Ideally, it won't be at Man United, but from a from a standpoint of I like to see people s succeed in life, he seems like one of those good people who will succeed if he keeps his self on a straight and narrow. And I only want someone else to achieve their dream, man. Like, I can't do the wishing bad on someone else. It's, it's not me, man. So, if that is the case, I hope he absolutely succeeds and and does well. But he he looks like there's a real player in there. And he seems extremely composed for an 18 year old, as does Bichetic. So I'm, I'm I'm intrigued to see how both get on next season. I really am. Um, Adnan says, is there a difference if a manager leaves a club or gets sacked? Does it change the attitude? Is there a difference in how we say goodbye? Yeah, absolutely. If a manager gets sacked. I think that's it's, it's a closed door. Klopp leaving means he could always come back potentially. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think it's a big difference. Um, Allier, um, what about Nico Williams? Yeah, good. I think he's a bit raw, but he's good. Apologies, guys. My laptop's starting to do a bit of silly buggers. But I am going to sign off here, though, boys and girls. Um, it has been a great show. Shout out to Drift. Um, obviously started the show. Um, I'm finishing it, um, even though the, the laptop and all that is starting to mess me about. PL, yes. Head over to Luke's channel in about half an hour. We're going to be doing a UFC preview and they'll be live. For any anyone who's a MMA fan or combat fan, 
please do join me on the Sanderson show tomorrow night um, for UFC 300, um, along with Luke Tanner and Jamie Phillips as well. And hopefully a few others are hopefully Matt and Drift will join as well. And just look, I'm going to ask candidly, I'm on the road to 2K on, on the Sanderson show. I'm on about 1.7 at the moment. So if you can, guys, head over there and just give me a subscribe. I'd be greatly appreciative of that. Um, oh, do you know what? I've got one more caller, actually. Joey, you ready, bro? Yeah, man, I'm ready, bro. What's going on, man? Not too bad, bro. How are you? So I didn't know if you were able, because when I tried to bring you on before, I think you had a few things going on. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, you I was in a... I was on a call. You know, first oh, of all, man, I want to just—I want to big you up, man. I want—I I agree with you too much. You in particular, <laughs> but Drift and Matt, Drift and Matt, I have some contention with them a little bit. Yeah. But um, you know, I've been living out here in the US. When I moved over here, in 2017, I um, I said, how am I going to stay in touch with my Liverpool man? I can't really even have the bants and all of that. You man made that available to me, so. Your yeah. flowers, man. That's why I'm always in the background. Sometimes I don't agree. Sometimes I'm a little bit moody when I'm dropping my super chats. But yeah, man, big up to you for real, man. Um, I'm I'm upset, bruv. I'm upset, man. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. The way I said last year, at the end of last year, I was with. I was like, you know what? If we can make top four. I'll be very happy if we can make top four this year. I'll be very, very happy. And then I said, all right, you know what? We're making some nice adjustments in the midfield. We actually can give it a go. Maybe we can get second or third. We can guarantee that because I'm looking at the other players, uh, the other teams. They weren't really doing much at the beginning of the season. When we start running the thing and we are number one for all of those months, it's a bitter pill to swallow right now, bro. I'm not <laughs> it's a bitter pill to swallow man and um just looking at the the landscape right now I just don't see us winning man I just I feel deflated yeah there was there was a, there was a caller that came on earlier on who had mentioned um you know <sighs> you prefer to lose like mid season like let's just get ourselves out of it so we can focus on other things and before I was like, yeah, like, no, we can go for all four. Like, I'm, I'm the quad guy too. Like, no, we can yeah, yeah. get it all. Let's just <laughs> go for it, man. Yeah. Like, and just the way we fell flat, the way we're falling flat right now is no good. And yeah. Drifty might be right about the full-on capitulation that's about to happen. If we don't beat Crystal Palace, yeah, this, it's a write-off. It's a write-off. And now Klopp's legacy, well, actually not his legacy. Klopp doesn't leave as we would have liked him to have left. Yeah. My question to you is, in terms of, I don't like to use the word blame, right? Let's just say culpable, but who's the most culpable here, right? You should use the fancy word for blame. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Joe, I see you. <laughs> like, who, 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 who would you say? Would you say it's FSG, would you say it's Klopp or are you going to say the players? Don't, I don't want you to say it's a combination of all three because we know that. <laughs> but, but who is more the most culpable at this juncture? For this I, season? Yes. For this season, honestly, I don't blame FSG for anything of this season. And I never thought Ooh. I'd say that phrase in my lifetime, but I don't because... They made funds available in the summer. Like, again, people will say that bid for Kaiseido was PR. The club don't bid and break a record bid if it's PR. They, they're right. not allowed to legally. So they made money available. Klopp wanted to keep Henderson. He wanted to keep Fabinho and he wanted to keep Milner. That said a lot for me. That fact that yeah. FFG had to step in and say Milner's not getting a renewal. We're selling Henderson and, and Fabinho. We've got a good offer. We're selling. That that said a lot for me. So FSG are out of it. Out of the players and Klopp, the attack have let themselves down a lot this season. Big time, man. A lot. But I've also said, tactically throughout the season, I 
think we have been found wanting a lot and we've had a lot of players bail us out with individual moments. And I can right. think of the games, the Fulham game where McAllister and Trent score worldies. Even Endo scores a great goal yep. in that game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's Newcastle. Like, that's him. He won us that game. But there's also been a few games where it's tactics. If, I'm gonna, if, if we don't win anything between now and the end of the season, the way we fell out of the FA Cup, the way we're falling out of the Europa, and if we don't win out in, in the Prem, I have to say it, it, it's on Jurgen. Oh, man. See, I, I didn't want to agree with you again. Yeah, See, I'm, I'm in the same boat, hurts. you know? It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the, the same players, boat. The players have to look at themselves in the mirror, but ultimately it falls at the feet of the manager, in my opinion, for this particular... The, the tactics and the, 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 the consistent playing of players that are out of form. And so out of yeah, our position like we like Gap. I've been screaming Gapo. People have been slating Gapo for for too long. He's mm. arguably one of our most technically gifted players in the squad. Yeah, but people just like, oh, he doesn't do this. He's he played our position, man. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just don't know. I'm also uh, I'm on the phone, babe. One 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 second. I'm talking to the coppish man. Then. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um. So yeah, like so, so, so yeah, man. I think yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you. The qu last question, because I know it's late there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and subscribe on your channel tomorrow as well. Cause I, I'm gonna watch that UFC thing. Um, yeah. So let's let's do that. But my my other question is, and it's side topic: Daniel Sturridge, right? Mm. Um, Diego Jota was mentioned earlier today in the in the in the in the, in the stream. That he's like arguably he's like a what do you say? A uh, mix uh, between Suarez and Fowler, but not as good as them. Yeah, yeah. And when you say when you make those combinations, it's like mm. that's a big shout. That's not a joke. Yeah. That's not, that's a real thing. Yeah. For me, I've always said exactly the same, but for Sturridge, for me, Sturridge in recent memory is our most devastating finisher that we have. Oh, and we don't, really, we don't really speak about him much. Yeah. He was phenomenal. Unplayable. Like, if, like Diogo Jota, if we swap him for uh, Daniel Sturridge, because it's the same kind of thing, injury prone, da-da-da. Yeah, yeah. if, if we had Dan Daniel Sturridge today, a fit Daniel Sturridge, we're cooking. We are cooking, bro. So, so I'll tell you, I tell you I, wouldn't com I wouldn't compare Sturridge to Suarez, though. Because he Jot has a bit of a battering ram where Sturridge wasn't. Sturridge, yeah. do you know it's very difficult to find a blend of two players? Like he's got that fowler in him in terms of right foot, left it's foot. Like, yeah, boom. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. been, like we we lord Jota's finishing. Sturridge was it, all due respect to Jota, Sturridge on another level when it comes to the finishing to Jota. Mad, yeah. Like Sturridge on another level. It's mad. It's I, mad. I know who that second player is though, because shut. Shall I tell you what it is? Sturridge could beat players with feet. Like, he could stand you still, and the next thing you know, he's past you with skill or pace or a combination of the both. But so then I'm he changed his game. He changed his game. Yeah. But he was I mean, doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and then he just true. became an absolute killer in the box. Just a killer. Because remember, he started off with a right wing, didn't he? Yeah. Sturridge was... Oh. God, God, man. Was Sturridge to to not have the injury. Like if Sturridge didn't have the injuries, it's not just Liverpool would have benefited. England would have as well. Everyone would have. He was an he's an elite talent. He, yeah, I, he just he just didn't fulfil his full potential. But he was an elite talent, man. But you know what? As I said, it's late. I'm the last caller. I don't want you to be up at, at, up at night. You got kids as well. I got my kid. My wife came out saying that what we do, we're supposed to be going tomorrow. My cousins and stuff. So I got to get ready. So yeah, man. Bless up to you. This is the first time I joined um, Coppish. Oh, and one other thing before I leave. Do you remember? Yeah, I, there was a super chat I sent in about three years ago, about two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I said if Nabi Kr scores seven goals in the Prem. I will yeah. run you guys a stack. I was ready to do it, you know. I was ready to do it, you know. <laughs> I saw him on like five or something, didn't he? No, no, it was like four. Was it four I started yeah, sweating a bit. Four. I started yeah. sweating a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I started sweating a little bit. But now I can't even do that. Times have changed. I can't even yeah. do that now. I can't even throw that money around no more. I but 
<laughs> but yeah, man, big up again to you, man. God bless you, all, all three of you. And then I'll catch up with you on, on the next one. And bless up whoever gave me that free membership because I was a member. And then I was like, wait, hold on. Man, what's going What do I get with these members? Like, I don't, I'm not seeing what I'm getting for the membership. I'll let me just throw in the super chat instead. But then I'm seeing that all of these members, these member videos, I've watched the last three. I'm like, oh, let me become a member again. So, yeah, man, I'm there. Appreciate you, Joe, bro. Appreciate you, bro, man. Thank you so much. All right, man. Bless up, man. Good luck. Bless you, bro. Thank I'll you, see bro. you tomorrow. Yes, definitely. Take it easy, man. Peace. Big up, Joe A. Big up, Joe A, man. Lovely call to end with. Right, let me hit up the supers before I officially say goodbye because I'm heading over to Luke's channel shortly. Uh, Ty says, one good game and Gap pose the truth. One bad game and Kelleher isn't good enough. I've seen Ali have just as bad a game with as that without concussion. That's true. That is true. We have seen Ali have bad games, but I've also seen Ali have a banquet of great games as well. So I think that's what the difference is. I'm with you. I'm Kelleher in all day. Yes, it was a bad game, but I'm Kelleher in all day because since Kelleher's coming to the team, barring yesterday, he's been absolutely sensational. Um, Gakpo, I would still cash on Gakpo, not because he's rubbish, but because I don't think he's suited to our league. Um, big up to the Rams stand. Go and subscribe to Rams. Rams, when you starting to make content, bro, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And I'm waiting for an invite when you do. And where's 12th man as well? I'm still waiting on that invite to jump on the channel as well, 12th man, bro. But I hope you're I hope you're well, Ram. Big up to your dad as well, bro. Um, Cal, I'm gonna try and get you to cricket resolution. I'll be honest, bro. You ain't got a good chance of that, Rams. <laughs> like, if you can get me to cricket, Rams, then you're a genius, bro. Because I have no interest. I got I gotta be honest. Uh, big up Zabiri says Cal drift and around, send the link, and let's have my owner's party. <laughs> <laughs> Bless my light, Matt. Um, <laughs> big up all the new callers. My owners, my owners. I never lived that one down. Big up Zabiri. Jamrock says, you think any LFC player will get 31 G, 31 goals and 17 assists again? Here's the thing. We create enough chances for it to be possible. I just don't know if it can be done. We'd have to get an elite player again. As of right now, Jot is the only one who could get 31 goals. Salah could do it if he has a good season. I just don't know if he's got that in him again. But we'd have to go and get someone to do that, if I'm going to be honest, Jamrock. Uh, Vitu says, if Sobo scores 10 in the Premier League next season, I'll run you a stack. Hold me to it. I'll hold you to it, man. I'll hold you to it. That 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 could very well happen, though. I'll be real. That could happen if he starts getting his shooting boots. So appreciate that. People, though, as I said, Nothing but love to you guys in the comments. Nothing but love to all the callers. All the callers who have called in previously, first-time callers as well. I can't stress how grateful we are for you guys. I can't stress how humbled I am by the community and by some of the nice things you guys say and the actions of you guys as well. It's not just you guys saying things. It's how you act towards us and, and how supportive you are. I cannot thank you guys enough. When you guys say things like we're the best channel and... It's a it's a it's a feeling like no other, and it's, it's truly humbling. And I, I do not take you guys for for granted. I do not take this community for granted. Big up Jamie Phillips in the chat as well. Go and subscribe to Jamie's channel. And honestly, you guys, when I, I say this every stream, and I don't just say it for the sake of it, we have the best community. We genuinely do. We have the best community, and I I, I will die on that hill. Um. So thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you uh, check out the preview that Matt and Drifted for the Palace game. Also, members, go and check out. I've got two new videos, um, EAFC24 video with Matt and Drift and a Prem Predictor show, which I'm going to aim to do weekly starting from today as well, guys. So make sure you tune into those. And we'll be back on Sunday for the live match watch along and player, react, player ratings and reaction show. People, love you all. Thank you all for watching. Smash the like button as well, please, guys. Let's get up to 1,000 likes. Stay safe, stay blessed. We are Coppish and we're out, people. Take care.